Welcome back to Total Party Kill. I am your friend and dungeon master and lovable nerd on the internet, Tony Sindelar, and it is time for more Total Party Kill. We are recording this March 2020, the March of the Quarantine, and what better way to se to celebrate uh, social isolation than the sport of shut-ins? I speak of none other <laughs> than Dungeons & Dragons. Uh, this is... Maybe more than my first or second Dungeons & Dragons session that I've facilitated this week. Uh, my brain is going, my body is still strong, but that is useless in this endeavor. Uh, for we have brought with us uh, two returning Total Party Kill regulars and three uh, relatively fresh-blooded individuals to foul everything up. Let me introduce, introduce our returning players first. First off, it's Dan Morin. Oh, hello. Hi, Tony. It's great to be here with you on a Wednesday night. Am I introducing something now? What am I doing? <laughs> you Traditionally, <laughs> you would tell us the name of your new character that you're playing. I guess I could do that for you. I am playing Qeris, who goes by Q. <laughs> uh, Q and he's a, he's a bard. He's a bard. New, a new, new players. It is, it is a... It is, <laughs> like Tony uses to introduce his name. <laughs> New My players. name is Qeris. <laughs> it oh, rhymes no. with no one told me. Maris. No one told me there would be songs. Uh, well, there's a bard. bard. Yeah. I'm a bard yeah, still, uh, lately disembarked from a pirate ship. Uh, my name is Q Yaris. I drive a late model Toyota Yaris. <laughs> that's you. Yeah, you drive go. a late model Toyota so. Yaris. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, that's one person introduced. <laughs> this is going great. All the time we have. Yep. <laughs> also here, uh, it's Aline Sims. Hi, Aline. Hello. I am playing Lee, uh, an Air Genasi monk. Sorry about that. I dropped some Legos in the trash, and I needed to deal with that right away. It was urgent. All right. Uh, so Aline and Dan are our regulars who you have heard on a variety of Total Party Kill adventures of the past. They are the stalwart foundation that we are building this experience around. Also, I am here. Let Jesus. us introduce our three new new newish players uh so i will introduce you and if you could tell us your character name and maybe you know your your background with dungeons and dragons because it may have been a year or two for some of you uh first off god help us it's glenn fleischman <laughs> <laughs> that's some introduction that is some introduction i'm here to ruin it as you know uh with uh my usual elon and lack of knowledge of what I'm actually doing, and then accidentally destroying everything in the process. So uh, I'm Karakon the Wise, a human with raccoon tendencies. Uh, and that's about all I know. I, I play Dungeons & Dragons uh, avidly. <laughs> Should I introduce my character more? I don't know. Is that enough? Okay. All right. I played Dungeons & Dragons avidly uh, and extensively, oh, 40 years ago. So we're doing great. I'm going to do great. Everything's the same. But I have, everything's I have an same. assistant here. Changed. I have an yeah. assistant here. It should, I should do the kids of the hall thing. It's 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 an audio podcast. It's right. Every every <laughs> spellcaster should have an assistant. I feel like that's right. It's true. I have, I have a D and D an experienced dungeon master at my side who is going to help guide. If Glenn wins, he's cheating. That's what I'm saying. Exactly. <laughs> also here, it's Kathy Campbell. Hi, Kathy. This is not your first Hi. total party kill experience, but your first experience with me as a dungeon master. So welcome. Yes. Uh, thank you. I have also played D and D in real life. I guess. Um, <laughs> what, is this that a simulation? Means? <laughs> I am play? unsure yeah. at this state in life and in the world. Um, so I'm here with my multitudes of unicorns to hopefully help me roll some good dice counts. Um, we'll see how that goes. I am playing Thamia, who is a Goliath fighter. Mm -hmm. And for those of you, perhaps some of our new players aren't familiar with a Goliath. A Goliath is sometimes known as a half giant. So they're pretty big. Uh, and Oh, like Hagrid. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. They're Whoa, 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 whoa. Totally legally distinct. <laughs> <laughs> Do not sue us. But like height wise, oh. yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's the non-licensed version of everything. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay. We have store brand. We have filed all the serial numbers off this. And last but not least, <laughs> one of my favorite incomparable panelists, uh, Lisa Schmeiser. Hi, Lisa. Welcome to Total Party Kill. How were you tricked Hi. into this? 
Um, I was supposed to play as a cave person last summer and had a work deadline that crept up and then exploded and couldn't do it. So when Tony offered me the chance to come back and redeem myself, I said yes. I am playing um, Gwendiel, the uh, human cleric. Uh, Gwendiel is absent-minded and uh, tends to... If, if, if an orc is charging her, she'll probably stop and like study the armor to see if she can figure out from whence it came as opposed to, you know, ducking. Um, <laughs> and the last time I played Dungeons and Dragons was during, I think, the first Bush administration. I was like, so, it's going to be defined by a presidential administration, isn't it, Lisa? Yes. Um, yes. I, yes. I know who you are. Uh, yes. So it's been a while. It's been a yeah. while. Um, I look forward to being the horrible warning um, that people learn by. <laughs> rather than any sort of good example. It's it's all good. I think our listeners enjoy hearing new people uh, work through <laughs> D&D uh, because, you know, some of them are aspiring to play D&D themselves. And what is this podcast if not a terrifying enabler uh, for people to pick <laughs> up uh, bad habits and spend too much money on media? So we will be playing an adventure called The Nightblade. I should just mention uh, this is an adventure from a collection called Fantastic Adventure put out by the Fly, Sly Flourish uh, website, which I have been using for many years. They have lots of really useful D&D uh, materials, and they put this out as a, you can buy it as a, a book or a, uh, a, a PDF, and I think I paid $15 for it, and it has like 10 adventures in it, and they're all intended to be kind of short, one-shotty things, one-shot being like one session. We're not going to get through this one all tonight. Um, but they look great, and you will probably hear some of the other ones on Total Party Kill Uh and they are all, yeah, I'm excited. So let us get into the thick of things. Um, all of you, because this is a one shot, we, we are just going to say you all know each other. Perhaps some of you go way, way back. Perhaps some of you just met, you know, a day or two earlier traveling on the road. You're all aspiring adventurers seeking to make a name for yourself or find knowledge or glory or treasure or, you know, whatever might motivate you to get up, pick up a weapon or a book and go out into the world. It is not enough for you to be a, a farmhand or a craftsperson or a town drunkard. You want to do something and travel and see the world and maybe right wrongs maybe wrong some rights i don't know i'm not defining your morality here um and so it, it happened that you know it's it's dangerous out there in the world it can be uh best to uh to travel with some friends and you have all decided uh for whatever reason that you're gonna you're headed in the same direction you might as well travel together uh and you find yourself on the road um headed in the general direction of a town called White Sparrow. That is where you're hoping to uh, spend the night uh, after probably spending uh, a little bit of time traveling in the wilderness, um, you know, with just you and the, the open road. So uh, for our video viewers, I've just opened up a world map and I have kind of scattered the player tokens at the southern corner, of, southern side of the world map. Um, so this is the valley uh, where... The next couple adventures I'll be running will take place as provided by Fantastic Adventures. And I'll tell you, probably the only, you know, White Sparrow, it's in the middle of nowhere. It's in a valley surrounded by a bunch of mountains. There's an old keep, because there's always an old keep. But White Sparrow <laughs> does have one, you know, to call it a tourist attraction would be would imply that there are tourists. Uh, but one signature landmark that many people know about, and perhaps you're curious about, at least just to see, which is, Ooh. it's got a giant stone hand sticking up out of the ground. <gasps> I was wondering about that. Yes, it does. I, I have to go see it. I have to go yes. see what it's made of, and if there are markings around it, and if there are if yeah. plants grow near it or don't it grow near it. compose a song. Of the yeah, so White, oh, White Sparrow, no. it is known this is for... Like a very bad idea. Um, giant, giant stone hand. Uh, it's been there for as long as anyone knows. Um, and you are traveling all on your way there. You probably think you've come down from the mountains and are headed through the forest in the direction of White Sparrow. You think you can't be more than like two hours or so from White Sparrow at this point, right? Uh, hopefully you can get there in time for dinner. And as you are making your way, uh, along the, the, uh, the forest road, um, you, you, you spot something perhaps unusual. Uh, there seems to be a, uh, a wagon tipped over with a um, like a tree collapsed on top of it. This is the part where I try and have a wagon ready to go, and I don't. <laughs> Seamless. Ah, a wagon. 
Look at that wagon. That's so, a great wagon. It looked like any, it was tipped uh, over. <laughs> are, there's no animals nearby. The animals have all gone away. <laughs> there, there is, there's no pack animals leading this wagon. It just looks like a wagon. It looks like there were probably some crates in it, but they're uh, they're they're gone, uh, or they're smashed up. Uh, and there's a wagon sitting there. Uh, is there no, any writing in, on the side of the wagon, or any writing on the sides of the crates? I would say you'd probably have to get a lot closer to the wagon to see that. You're kind of, you know, you came around a bend in the road, you saw a mm-hmm. wagon. Let's say that wagon's a good. 30 or 40 feet down the road from you. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. So, do yeah. Hear, so, do we hear anything coming from the wagon? Do you want to give distance? me a, a perception check, Lee? 12. 12. You listen, you don't hear anything. Seems, in okay. fact, it's like, it's a little too quiet. Uh, there's there's oh. no birds chirping or anything. Oh, wow. Yeah. You know, you're level two. You might be, I don't know how you feel about that. Uh, it seems like I should blow that wagon up because I could do that. I could blow that wagon up. Perhaps let's I would not take care of the jump problem. to conclusions, friends. I don't know. It's very attractive. I don't know. Yeah. I thought, so um, I'd like to see if we can investigate it a little bit more first. Well, all right. But blowing it up just sounds so good. <laughs> let's see. Um, okay. There, if there's nothing there anybody- in there that we need, you can blow it up later. How about that? I think there's always a good story behind how such a wagon would end up tipped over in the middle I'm of the road with no animals. Is there anybody in our party who has really good eyesight or can can study it a little bit more before we get a little bit closer? Uh, I do, I do. Okay. I think. <laughs> would you mind studying it in return for a promise to blow up at least one crate? Uh, maybe. I think I have good eyesight. Huh. I, have, I have 60 okay. foot dark it's vision, like, I believe. This is like, what is like managing a toddler. So you, you can blow up <laughs> one crate. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is how you can tell I had a toddler. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Just you listen one to me now. Cocktail. So can yeah. I, uh, do I roll for, uh, yeah, roll perception. So you, what do I roll? A, roll a d20. A d20. Whenever I tell you to roll something, assume a d20. Okay. So I've rolled a t- <laughs> Oh, right. a two. So a two. Two means, nothing. No, you uh, get half a crate now. You don't get to yeah. buy right. the whole crate. So, uh, just Glenn, just this is at this point, this is academic. Uh, but Rex <laughs> could probably point out on your character sheet where your perception score is, and it, what it's scores? your perception. Yes, mm-hmm. perception. It's and plus so you, zero. So, oh my God. <laughs> wait, my perception score is plus three. Should I maybe roll for it then? You are significantly Mine better than uh, uh, Glenn. How do you say your name again? Karakon. 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 Right. So, Glenn, Glenn, just to close the loop, you've rolled a two. Can you add zero to that? <laughs> wait, what does that mean? Yes, that's uh, twenty. No. <laughs> oh, no, it's true. It's true. Uh, I think he gets inspiration oh, for that. What are you doing? Negative 50 on my mouth. Technically. Uh, you said, and it's true. You didn't say uh, where to put it. So, just just frame of reference for our new players, a two is not a very good score. No. So okay. The, the range okay. is from 1 to 20. 20 mm-hmm. is really, really good. One is abject failure. So, wait a minute. Go- you looked at your sheet and you thought you had, like, Good long sight in your perception. I have 60 foot dark vision, though. So we may have but learned it's not something. Dark. Oh we, well, what if it was night? Just, uh, like, uh, so, <laughs> just to clarify, it's not. <laughs> okay. Second, I, I think that we learned a lot both about Dungeons and Dragons so far and also about Glenn. <laughs> so. Okay. so, so I have a perception of three. Should I maybe roll the yeah. 20 and see what I get? Okay, let me do that well, now. It is literally mathematically impossible for you to do as bad as Glenn. <gasps> oh my <laughs> gosh, I rolled 20! Wow! wow. Yeah. Lisa, so you are you... 23. Lisa, are, yes. you running, are you running a con on us? <laughs> you have to tell us. <laughs> <if you're running. laughs> No, I mean, if she, even, unless were. she hacked roll 20, yeah. too. We could so, Lisa, you have rolled a 20. You would add your uh-huh. 3 to that and get a 23, okay. which is very good. Okay. You di- somehow <laughs> avoid being distracted by Karakon. Uh, Wait, 20 Gwendolyn- is better than 2, you're saying? <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Gwendale, you look around and you notice mm-hmm. that uh, that tree that has been kind of toppled over on this wagon to smash it. Like, this mm-hmm. whole scene does not make any sense. There's no, no. animals. Yeah. That tree clearly chopped down. And in fact, you think you see some uh, some kind of figures in the shadows of the uh. Uh, the, tr- the trees and the brush to either side of the path 
right where this wagon has been knocked over. I think everything about this might scream trap. Set up. Can I yeah. see how many figures are on either side of the brush? I will tell you with a 20, uh, yeah, you can tell that there's probably about three on each side. Okay. And can I tell like how big they are or if they're they any look, different species? They look humanoid. Okay, so they're humanoid. There's three on either side. Uh, it's extremely quiet. Um, I'm going to tell right, the rest right of now, my party. Okay, I was going to say, right now you know this and no one else knows this. I'm so. going to tell the rest of my party and say, hey, I just happened to notice that this tree's been chopped down. This wasn't a natural accident. I think we're supposed to be lured in by the promise of going through the cart and or blowing it up. But <laughs> <laughs> there appear to be three armed people on either side of the cart lying in ambush for us. What do you guys think we should do? Well, this sounds like fun. Shall we <laughs> investigate uh, further? <laughs> Gwendiel, I will tell you with a 23, you also, you know, perception is vision and hearing, I think, right? Uh, uh -huh. You hear one of the figures whisper to the other one, why aren't they coming over here? <laughs> uh, they're expect and then so I tell the rest of my party, hey, they're expecting us to come over. So do we want to sit tight and wait for them to get bored and angry and try to attack us while we're waiting for them. Point, or point of order, Mr. The Sherman. best way to... Point of order. So I've here's my, my suggestion. I can't, do, I can't do anything now, right? You can do so, whatever you want. Right. Okay. So here's my <laughs> suggestion. Traveling, par traveling party, here's my suggestion. I think that we should have Queris conduct a sing song and we all pretend we're interested in what he's singing and <laughs> send him we, out in advance several no 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 pieces. like we have we sit like in rapt attention or we feign rapt attention and these guys will eventually get so bored and so irritated that they'll try to rush us but ha ha we'll be ready for them that's my proposal what do you guys think I'm not really a strategist, but I read about it once in a book. And I mean, like, I it mean, totally I mean, worked in the great faint of Sunlight Dell. So if we have a bard, we might as well make him useful. Ah, Sunlight Dell, one of my favorite stories of all time. I think that sounds great. Uh, QRS pulls out his instrument, which is a, bag, a bagpipe. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. <laughs> I mean, I mean, so, I, somehow you say the bagpipe is Wait, the best instrument. Wait, how is going to sing while he plays the bagpipe? I, need to bring I took bagpipe proficiency for this reason. Yes. <laughs> all, all of you have heard a lot of bagpiping over the last couple of days. Possibly you had all blocked it out until right. this moment. <laughs> I mean, I was going to say that the best way to spring a trap is to know that the trap is there, but yeah. I mean... Um, I'm second guessing. You think the best uh, way to spring a trap is some kind of bagpipe plan instead? <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah. I, 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 yeah. I, think, I, I, I think it was Catal. I think it was Catullus who said that. Um, yeah. so. We'll lull them into a false sense of security because no one, you know, this is yeah. No one ever mm -hmm. attacks bagpipers. <laughs> exactly. Do you no, have a banjo? Know. Maybe we could do a lot banjo. Of confidence. Uh, uh, sadly, a lot I can of confidence. also play the pan flute and the dulcimer, but I'm not carrying oh either God. of those. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Welcome to the <laughs> world of Dungeons and Dragons. Where are you keeping the dulcimer? I don't, oh I don't have a dulcimer. I just know how to play one. Right. <laughs> so we could make a primitive one. It's, one of, one of it's like riding a bicycle. You never really forget how to play the dulcimer. That's right. Right. Learned. Yeah. That's what they say. <laughs> I was going to say perhaps, uh, perhaps our friend, we could indulge our friend Caracon and give him an opportunity to blow up some of these ambushers. I was hoping oh, to blow something right. up. Uh, I have some good blowing up spells, I think, don't I? Can, he consults okay. with his assistant. <laughs> He's some... got to consult his familiar. So are you going to blow things up by, like, lobbing projectiles at them? Or are you going to, like, sneak up and try to blow them up, like, on site? What? Which one do you? I got this great thing called Chaos Bolt that really fits my personality. It really <laughs> does. Yeah. Wow, that's works perfect. from 120 feet. And it's, uh, what do you think? Is that a good... Uh... It's a 2d8 <laughs> effect, plus 3 hit. Does that all make sense to anybody? Uh, Why we're saying things? I think you got to choose what type it is. Oh, so I you see. You could use, like, fire or whatever. So I could use, all right, I could use fire, or, and I could cast I it. Like is this a good idea? Thunder. Yeah, if you want to do one side, and maybe I can attack the other side. I like that. I like that. Are you just, is your idea of attacking the other side that you're just going to run towards them? And, and well, I have uh, two throw like range hand axes and a mm -hmm. long sword. Oh, do we just Tony, to be clear? Can we see just these? To be clear, 
Uh, and you're still playing bagpipes, right? So there's so right more now than two. So right now our strategy is that one part that the party splits up, half the party plays bagpipes and listens, and the other half like splits and rushes. <laughs> An unorth- unor- unorthodox strategy. Uh, well, they'll Dan, be writhing like in pain you- from the bagpipes, so that'll help. Dan, it sounded like you I, had a question. I was going to ask if um, do we have the ability? Like, can we see these people well enough to target them with spells? I would effect? say you can't yet. Uh, so okay. I mean. Uh, your friend uh, uh, Gwend- Gwendiel has pointed. Has sh- Gwendiel, you you know where they are oh, and have kind yeah. of may suggested make, the general area. But, may, uh, may I make a suggestion? Mm. How about not while you're playing the bagpipes? You can. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he can do sign language too. With it's his... like Mumford and Sons except well. in yeah. bagpipes. <laughs> may I sing a suggestion? <laughs> yes, please. Yes, please. I say we walk into the trap, but we'll be ready for them. Wow. And when they wow, attack the us, we'll get the drop by being readied with our actions so that when they come out of hiding, then we target mm. them with all our spells and effects. We can, we can be ready. Like, like Gwyn said, we can be ready because we know the trap is coming, uh, but we will pretend to spring it. So the reason I'm objecting to this is just because they will know more about the trap than we do by virtue of having set it and by having observed us. And we haven't observed them yet. So I worry that if we walk into the trap, then we don't know what strategic advantages they have. This is the risk that we might take. Yeah. But yeah, I don't which know. is why I wanted. This is why I wanted to make them angry and impatient, and have them jump out of the trap. They're already whispering about why, um, why we're not, why aren't they going in the and, trap? And they're already like thrown by it. So let's continue. And Gwendiel, to as Gwendiel, as you express that to your bardic friend, uh, uh-huh. several figures stop out of the brush, looking yes! irritated. Oh, yes! <laughs> <laughs> Who the hell is playing uh, those bagpipes? Exactly. The bagpipes always flush them out. Uh, two, two figures, two figures step out. One from the north side of the road, one from the south side of the road, and they uh-huh. uh, they are looking. They look, you know, somewhat menacing. Um, they are clad in kind of you know black or at least dingy uh, looking clothing. Uh, they look, you know, I, I guess if I had to pick one word, I would say greasy. Uh, they are armed with kind of uh, old looking swords. Uh, one of them's got a crossbow on his back. And uh, the one who kind of seems to be the leader uh, holds out his his, uh, his sword and kind of waves it in your direction and says, "Oh, you all lot here! You, you you can't pass this road. It's a there's a toll." Hello, friends. Perhaps you know this song. <laughs> and I start I should, playing I should, I should sing on the bagpipes to ba- to uh, to buy my party some time to act. Okay. All right, the, uh, I'm already, I'm already for some thumping. The uh, the other, the second, the second bandit like elbows the the first one and says, "See, Arthur, they ain't so bad." And Archer uh, <laughs> elbows Archer him back. Real, real Archer is the lead bandit. Archer <laughs> elbows him back really hard. Mm-hmm. The second bandit is kind of catching his breath. <laughs> and Archer says, "Your weapons and belongings, drop them on the ground, and in the name of the night blades, we'll spare your lives and your bagpipe." <laughs> Ooh. Oh. Well, I gotta think about How that. How do we one. get you to not spare the bagpipe? I mean, I'm just throwing <laughs> that out there. Yeah. Wait, can we offer you? It's a negotiable. <laughs> what if we get Karkarin to blow up the bagpipe for you? Would that work? This is an heirloom Terrible. bagpipe. I'll have you know. <laughs> More money, less talking. Let's see him stuff on the ground. Go. Okay. Don't we? I'm ready, to, I'm about to I'm ready for some clobbering. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I was gonna yeah. say, yeah, I'm not so much with the clobbering. I'm I'm mostly with second guessing everybody. So I'm gonna S- let you several guys fight. more uh, ne- several more bandits kind of uh, blend oh. out of the woods behind. I take that back. Friends. I can fight now. <laughs> I can I can hurl a undulating, warbling mass of chaotic energy at one creature. Please do. All right. So are here's how. Roll for yeah. Here is how combat is going to work, friends. Okay. You are going to do what's called roll for initiative. As mm-hmm. is traditional, you will roll a d20. And then on your character sheet, you have an initiative modifier. And I will put you in a, in a list. And you mm-hmm. will, and that will determine the order that you go in. You you each get a unique initiative. The bandits get one initiative, which I will roll now while you are figuring out your initiatives. Okay, so, so I rolled. A I rolled nineteen. Nice. Plus oh, one. good. I rolled a nineteen. Yes. 
So I rolled a six and my initiative is three. So that makes nine total. All right. I'm putting that in for you. Uh, Lee, it looks like you put yours in already. Quarus, you already put yours in. Uh, Glenn, what did did Karakon? I got 19. I rolled 19 and I got a plus one initiative. So I have 20. You have 20. Excellent. All right. If you click (laughs) this... Keeps I don't. I don't know if you can see the turn order thing already. Um, yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. You can. Okay. Plus one. Oh, I see. Uh oh. What's this? What, why is Bandit four on the, the the turn order? What does that mean? That's, that's all the bandits. Go. That's oh, when they okay. get to go. All the bandits. Oh, that's when they so, get to go. So they get to yeah. go after me. Okay. Yeah, they go as a group. So basically, uh, the bandits think that you're going to surrender. Uh, and mm. give them most of your money and belongings. And you, as a more or less unified front, except for Quarrelus, who is still concerned about his bagpipe, have <laughs> turned on the bandits very quickly. So, uh, the way this works, um, mm-hmm. it, we are now in combat. Each turn in combat is like six seconds, right? So it's real quick. Uh, you can do a move, which is up to your speed. You can break that up into pieces if you want, and you do an action. An action is traditionally attacking or casting a spell. So, um, Thamia, you are at the top of the order, so you get to go first if you know what you're going to do. I know you are a newish player, but uh, Aline and Dan are going to help you out. Okay, so uh, I'm guessing just to confirm that this is the actual location so yeah, it's I can, it's approximate type of damage like approximate so basically i can fear. draw my long sword and attack bandit three yeah I'll, I'll say you know you guys are all clustered together a little ways up the road but bandit three is a short walk for you you could totally draw your long sword run down the the road and attack the uh unfortunately named bandit three <laughs> all right everyone sound good Mm-hmm. Technically, this yeah. bandit has a name. Bob. Bob the bandit. Can he strike it? Four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. So I am going to attack bandit three. I am All rolling right. my 1d8. Uh, you're going to roll a d20 first to see if you oh, hit him. Oh, yes. Let's see if I hit. Yeah. Let's forget. That's okay. Because I assume that I'm going to hit. And I hit. I rolled a 19. Yay. So yes. That's a positive energy Guessing. we need in this campaign. Yes. 19s are pretty good. So that bandit, this is the bandit that Arturo like elbowed in the thing, and he is like a little bit winded, and he's kind of <clears> glaring at at, uh, at Arturo when uh, Thamia, the uh, the half giant, thunders down the road and <laughs> hits our, uh, hits this bandit right in the chest, pretty good with a longsword. Uh, for how much damage, Thamia? Uh, five plus three, which is eight. Which is eight. That bandit is severely wounded. Uh, I'm going to put a little <laughs> oh. red dot on him, which indicates that this is not a, a normal convention in this Dungeons & Dragons, but I think it's convenient. It means he's probably at less than half the, half health. He is He's pretty badly hurt. He is, like, bleeding Beach. from a large wound that you caused with your <laughs> sword. <laughs> now, Thammy, you could mohawk. potentially... Awesome. Yeah, you could potentially, like, move away. You can also do... There are things that might be, like, bonus actions or free actions, which would be, like, little quick things, right? Like, opening a door, picking something up might be one of those. Shouting something to your friends or to your enemies uh, would be any of those. So you're welcome to do all those before your turn ends. So... Uh, okay. Um, I have a bonus action of two weapon fighting. Mm. But mm-hmm. since I already swung with the longsword, and is a longsword two-handed, I can't tell. A longsword from... is one or, it's basically versatile, so you can use it with one or two hands. Do you have another okay. weapon? So if I was to, like, pull the hand axe that I have and, like, add a second. You like, could do a second attack with that, um, but I believe you will not get to add your um, uh, modifier to the damage. So it does less damage. Okay. okay. Well, it's still a 1d6. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. If I can find the six, which oh, it's a just so y'all know, the six sided dice is the normal looking dice. It's cla- <laughs> Di- dice classic, if you will. Helping, oh. yes, <laughs> helping you with there. <clears throat> yeah, but first I gotta roll the d twenty. Yeah, I rolled a twelve plus. Uh, wait, is it just no? It's under. Add? Look at the thing, and you'll see the hit slash dc. Oh, uh, plus five. So 17. 17. Really? Then... Plus five? That seems very high. But even if it was plus one, it would have been enough. You totally okay. hit this guy with a hand axe. Uh, 
<laughs> Kathy, can you tell us how you killed this guy? <laughs> um, so we're gonna... <laughs> Sounds like a gentle police interrogation. <laughs> sure, so ma'am. I take the long sword thing. and I slice from like <laughs> neck <laughs> and down, and then I take my hand axe and I like just kind of go for the. Wow, <laughs> that's serious stuff. There, this is an ex bandit. He <laughs> dies with a look of shock. Is that and short confusion for the- extreme bandit, Tony? <laughs> He looks. He dies with a look of Extremely shock and confusion dead. on his face, and Arturo the bandit seems non nonplussed. Mm-hmm. I'll just give Arturo our name. Okay, and then now. with that, um, I You're think done. my turn is done. All right, next up is Karakun the Wise. <laughs> has yet to show us wisdom, but perhaps now is the moment. Well, my wisdom is mostly in the form of blowing things up. I'm just going to confess that right now. Ah, the American I'm way. I'm pretty smart about it. <laughs> pretty smart about it. I also like shiny objects and washing things in rivers. Mm. Um, sure, Glenn, with, there's a difference between intelligence and wisdom. So I don't understand that. Uh, so <laughs> on the on the sheet, there's gonna there's one that says intelligence. And I, I think he knew. It's, I think I, I can never tell when Glenn's messing with. I know. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna choose to be supportive for maybe the I just, people in the audience that don't know the joke. Okay. Uh, in my no, head, plus zero intelligence, so I got that going for me. Mm. Uh, so uh, I can move. I have a, I have a thirty foot. Uh, mm. I can move thirty feet speed, right? So I can move. Yeah, towards. that's six squares. I want to go. Well, I'm I'm gonna get Arturo. I'm gonna destroy this guy. I got him. Uh, so what's my likely? And I got a spell all wrapped up and ready to go. Your spells are probably pretty good range, so you probably don't even need to get close to <laughs> it's Arturo. It's 120 foot. It's 120 uh, foot range. I will spell. tell you, there like that's a lot. Uh, every <laughs> everything you could po- right now. I use these words carefully. Everything you could possibly want to blow up is within 120 feet of you. You simply get to decide what is that thing that you are blowing up. Arturo is going down. All right. So this is... I I suspect the head, the body falls. Yeah. So now, now Glenn, Karakun is some kind of magic user, correct? I'm a sorcerer. So we are going to learn how magic works in Dungeons and Dragons. (gasps) So... This has all been magic time. I feel like I'm between Karakun and Arturo. Should I worry about that? No, no. Uh, no, not unless my, I'm. My no, bolts will go around you. <laughs> it depends. As a wizard, as a, sorry, not as a wizard. That was unkind of me. How as dare a sorcerer, uh, Karakun probably dare. has a variety of spells. Uh, well, maybe not at level two, but he has the potential to have a variety of spells. Some which might affect an area, and some mm-hmm. which might affect an individual. So, Karakun, what spell were you thinking of casting <laughs> on our bandit of- leader? Chaos Bolt, as befits my nature and intent. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll be honest. I don't know how Chaos Bolt works. Let's find out really together. Long description. Woo. It's an undulating, warbling mass of chaotic energy yeah. that hits one creature within range. It's perfect. The, so the key this there is, a, is one creature. I'm a Lady Gaga, is what you're saying. Yeah. So uh, usually with a spell, there's two types of spells. There's spells where you roll a spell attack, and there's mm-hmm. spells where the spell just happens, and the target of the spell has to make a saving throw to see if they are going to get hit or not. I don't know what kind of spell Chaos Bolt is. Do you? Well, this this says uh, the target says uh, uh, on a hit, the target takes two d8 plus one d6 damage. The relevant choose sentence one is of the, the one D8s. before that. Oh, what's that? Just read huh? one sentence before the on a hit. Oh, make a ranged spell attack against the target. All right. Karakun, roll a d20 and add uh, your spell attack modifier, which is probably plus one or plus two or plus three, I would guess, at okay, your level. So I do um, roll d20 plus what, Rex? Plus, plus, plus three. Plus three. <gasps> 19. Oh Ooh, that's good. Okay. All right. Um, no, no, that's the previous one, isn't it? Or is yeah, it? I think you, no, rolled no. A, you rolled a one plus three, it looks like. Oh, I did the no. wrong thing here. What All right. Wait, what? Um, what just happened? I rolled a I, D9. Oh, I'm sorry. I rolled two different die. So <laughs> I rolled a, a die with one side. I, I'm confused as to what happened. I rolled a die Wait, with you one rolled... side somehow. I rolled it once. You can't roll a die with one side. But if it's one side, it's a sheet of paper. No, it's a sheet of paper. No. Two sides. <laughs> You've just invented like a whole new field of mathematics. Uh, I hope let, you're happy. Let's take Can someone clarify for me? Was Glenn, is that 19 left over from earlier? Or that was, was that his initiative. That, that well, was that's his initiative. I'm sorry. So, All right. So I so, did get a one plus three. I'm sorry. Yes. Glenn, the bad news is you rolled what is called a critical fail. Remember when Lisa rolled a 20 and everyone was really yeah. proud of her and was yeah. like, Lisa's the best? This <laughs> oh. is just like that. 
but slightly different in that uh, your witch bolt, your chaos bolt, uh, d- goes nowhere near Arturo. It may not even go near um, uh, <laughs> the bandits. Uh, does anything bad happen for a sorcerer when they roll a, a one? Does anyone know, Dan? Yes, something bad. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, you missed. So when you used a, uh, you have to roll a d20, Glenn. Use okay. a spell that is, wait, hold on, I'm sorry. What what type of sorcerer are you? I think that's the relevant question. I'm a long tooth. Is oh, that the right thing? No, it, that's, your, oh. that's your shifter what kind of subclass. Sorcerer am I? What? what kind of sorcerer am I? Oh, it's, um. You're using store. I... Wait, check your features and traits. Features and traits. Hold on, we're finding advice here. Uh, uh, divine magic. Divine oh, magic. Divine magic. Okay, I don't think so. If you're a wild magic sorcerer, something bad happens. But okay, I think you're. All right. So, uh, Karakun, there is an impressive light show from your direction, <laughs> but nothing happens to the bandits. That's what everyone always says. Unless you want to move, I think that's probably your turn. <laughs> I think I'm back in the back, so probably in a safe position. Do you want to? Do you want to back up? Back up slightly from there. I'm going to back up even further since I failed utterly. All right, you How start. You start. You start thinking about locations back in the other direction, other towns, places. You know how you'll explain the missing missing people you set out with, uh, what your cover story is, what your new name will be, etc. <laughs> yeah, hardly knew these people. Yeah, barely. Uh, so next up. Aline, I believe it is you as Lee. So I'm going to uh, kind of try to hit Arturo, um, kind of thinking along the same lines as my um, previous actor there. And so Lee, I'm going to stumble forward. I have a quarter staff that I'm leaning on heavily, stumbling toward who I have identified as the ringleader of this operation mm-hmm. and uh, I'm going to try to hit them with my quarter staff. All right. Like you see, you see, you see me stumble and then like I pull my, my quarter staff. I look like I'm going to fall. Nobody knows what's happening. And then I roll a, an 18. <gasps> to hit. Yay! That's awesome. So it, wow. Arturo reaches out to help you. <laughs> Oh, that's very kind. And so or, as it's unclear or possibly mug you <laughs> or take the quarter stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so they, um, as they do that, I just knock him in the ribs, uh, for six points of damage. Oh, Arturo is not looking great. This is not how he thought his afternoon was going to go. He got a pretty light show though. So there was that. Yeah. And pretty harmless light show. I think that is the extent of my turn. All right. Gwendiel, you are okay. kind of in the m- middle of the group here. Uh, Lee and Thamia have rushed up ahead to engage the uh, the bandits in close quarters combat. Uh, mm-hmm. you're you're still kind of in the back, but you know, you'll know you now have a lot of breathing room now that a certain character has retreated up the road. Uh, just you and the bagpipe <laughs> player alone in the road here. Oh, what, good. What do, what do you want to do? Now, I think as a cleric, you probably have a variety of tactics you could take here. I don't know any of them. <laughs> to define the two classic ones would be hang back and cast spells or shoot crossbow bolts or run in and hit somebody with a mace i would say or your yeah my my plan was to go with the crossbow to be honest because i noticed that although arturo's in the front and maybe staggering around there are two people behind him there are and i feel pretty confident that thamia could probably (laughs) take out the ones um to the south but i'm a little concerned Mm -hmm. about the guys from the north so, all right, tell me, I roll the d20 first? Yep. Okay, so you're maybe. firing a crossbow bolt. That's right, crossbow aficionados. I've learned that your crossbows shoot bolts. So uh, I whip out the crossbow. I just rolled a three. Um, let's see. I have a five that goes with it. So that's, that's eight. eight total. Okay. So your that's crossbow, eight. the crossbow bolt kind of whizzes between Lee and Arturo and funk into the w- side of the wagon uh, on the, on the thing there. Um, oh, that's but not it good. seems like, yeah, didn't, didn't, didn't get to Arturo. Okay. It did not so get that to was Arturo. Your, yeah. That was your action. You could now mm-hmm. choose to move around if you wanted, or if there's any other kind of simple things that you wanted to do as a free action or a bonus action. Oh, I'm putting myself near um, Damien and Lee at this point. All right. <laughs> So you kind of, you want to like scamper forward and be right behind Thamia? Yeah. Yeah. All right. 
Sounds great. All right, next up is Team Bandit. Uh-oh, Go bandits. bandits! Bandits! No, Everybody no. loves bandits. Uh, well, the good news is you have killed one out of six bandits already. The bad right. news is that there are five there bandits are five remaining. Oh, no. And there are, I believe, five of you is how I would count. So, two uh, more bandits c- cleanly step out of the woods behind Arturo. The other two are on the southern side here. Um, so I think this one's just going to step over his friend. Two bandits are going to rush up. Uh, they have seen that, that Thamia is a force to be reckoned with. And so they are going to uh, to pull out their kind of old rusty metal swords and attack Thamia in hopes of taking down the tough one first. No, so, Thamia, no. you have... No. Two sword attacks coming your way. You might check your armor class now because I'm going to tell you two numbers and you're going to tell me if they are anywhere near your armor class or not. So first one uh, rolled a critical fail. He trips on the guts of his friend <laughs> that, that Thamia cut in half um, and gets kind of <laughs> tangled up in that. It's unsightly. Um, but the second one takes the long path through the underbrush and gets mm-hmm. up into a, gets closer to Thamia and swings his sword. Thamia, uh, sixteen versus your armor class. I have a nineteen. Oh, and so you so block nice. it with the oh, long sword, yay. and he looks <laughs> Go, like Thamia. this has never happened to him before. <laughs> <laughs> Look, it happens to everybody in the best of times. Sometimes mm. that sword gets blocked. All right, nothing you can do about it, kiddo. On the other side of the road, the battle continues. Arturo is looking, uh, he's looking upset. He has been hit in the stomach with a quarterstaff. He did not think a piece of wood could hurt like that. And so he is turning (laughs) and trying to, uh, slice a piece out of Lee. Uh, that's only an 11 Lee. Any chance that hits you? No. Yeah. So you are, you are... Like you are moving like a dancer, and he is just—he is attacking where you were seconds ago. Uh, the other two are not sure what to do about this. This this uh, you know person who's not armed with a sword or a crossbow. Like, what do you deal with that? And so they hang back. They don't want to get in the fray with Arturo there because Arturo is kind of swinging wildly. Uh, so these two, this is Bandit Three and another Bandit. Uh, they mm-hmm. are going to ready some crossbows and fire crossbows at Lee. So, Lee, crossbow bolt number one um, is a six, which is not very intimidating. But crossbow bolt number two, it's a critical. Somehow, you are dancing, you are blocking, you are dodging sword attacks and crossbow bolts, and one catches you for five damage. Five? Yeah. Okay. Now, just checking, you are level two characters, not the highest Mm -hmm. level. How does five points of damage sound to a level two character that is Lee? That is you, Aline. It, it sounds like about a third of my health is gone. All right. So not not great. Like yeah. you don't want to do that two more times. No. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right. So that was Team Bandit. Uh, next up is my favorite bard in this adventure. Uh <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, fire. So, uh, Ooh, your turn. Q, your turn. yeah, Q slings his bagpipe over his shoulder and he draws <laughs> a rapier and gives it some experimental slashes as he strolls towards the bandits and singing, Arturo Bandito, you'll soon be finito. <laughs> Kill me! Kill me! Not the bandits! I like that. Does he bring the rapier out of the bagpipe? That would yes, be Yes, that's right. Yeah. Oh, but rape, one of the yes. things in it's the like bagpipe, one, like, of the horns, you, yeah, one of the horns, one of the pipes is a sword. <laughs> you guys <laughs> thought cane swords were cool. They got nothing on oh, bagpipe. bagpipe. Who knows what the other four or five <laughs> are? Rapiers, yes. <laughs> bagpipe rapiers is a great band. Saw them open for the Dropkick Murphys. Oh, yes, thank God. you. Oh, Dan, I was going to do the same thing. Not even the same type of joke, the same joke. Um, share brain you guys are in Boston share and the dropkick Murphys at their concert yeah. uh, alright uh, boy I'm gonna roll and see how badly this goes <laughs> so you are targeting this Q. Q you are tar- you're targeting you're going right for the, the head of the snake yeah. Arturo oh yeah that's what you do that's what you do I rolled, that's what you do uh, I rolled an 11 I have a plus 5 so that's 16 Ooh. that will hit a bandit roll me damage alright let's see how this goes uh, that will be a total of 9 damage on him Ooh. Oh, that uh, QRS, could you tell us what a, a, a blow that takes down a bandit looks like? 
Yeah, so actually, he's you know he's sort of flourishing a little bit, but as he gets up there, like seeing that all the attention is on the sword, he suddenly just like moves just incredibly fast and just does like one little like stab just right through the heart. He's just, eh. and then it's just he just gotta hurt. He goes down. He goes down like gotta a hurt. sack of potatoes. Ugh. Well, the uh, the four Jesus. remaining bandits uh, mm-hmm. have about a second as they have like a brief interchange between all of them communicated only through looking at each other at, with mm-hmm. shifty eyes. And basically there is a range of panic and excitement on, on between the various bandits. And you hear one of them kind of like it looks like he mouths the word promotion um, <laughs> to another. <laughs> So, Kyaris, you are standing over the slain body of uh, Arturo the bandit. You're in the in the fray here right next to two other bandits. Do you want to hang out here? What's your plan? Uh, I, well, I can't really move away without encouraging them to attack me. So I will. Uh, they have crossbows out, so I will oh, say that they crossbows. are not. Okay. Yeah, those guys had crossbows because they didn't want uh, to get up in there with Lee. Q will step back a square, and then he'll do like a flourish and a bow. <laughs> All right. It's un- <laughs> unclear if anyone Course. saw that. So. <laughs> All right. Thamia, you are next. So there are two bandits right up in your grill uh, engaged with you. That means if you tried to get away, they would potentially get to hit at you if you... Uh, but also, I feel like maybe you're pretty happy with where you are. I, I, I'm pretty content in this situation. Um, can you tell me which one was the one that like stumbled when they tried to attack me? Uh, that would be five. Bandit Bandit 4. Bandit 4 okay. is uh, currently kind of ankle deep in guts. Okay, cool. So I'd like to add some more guts to oh, gosh. His, <laughs> um, not his... Not his own guts. I mean... Nine. Five Let's go. It, that's actually a good a good plan. It's like a I'm DIY gonna, thing, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So let's actually add some of Bandit Five's guts. So mm. I would like to. Guys, this is the worst cooking show I've ever tuned into. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. I mean, we do. Uh, Goliaths do tend to cook in a different uh, situation. I'm making that up. I have no idea, but mm. we're going with that. Um, oh, except I rolled a two, so I'm guessing I'm not hitting them. Yeah, I would just, as as you are learning a little bit about Dungeons & Dragons, sometimes I don't bother to do the math on twos. Um, yeah, you no, know. I'm not, like, that, no, that's Yeah, a, so you're trading, you're trading blows back and forth, but it's all, it's fancy sword work that you're both, like, blocking and parrying. Now, you do you still yeah. have two-weapon fighting? Can you be using your hand axe also? Yes, yes, so I will roll my hand, uh, roll... La, 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 la. Roll for my hand axe. I rolled a nine, which uh, is plus five. Is it really no. plus five? Yeah, because wow. I assume your strength is a plus three, right? Yep. Yep, and the okay. proficiency bonus at level two is plus two. That's pretty good. So you are you are like trading blows with the longsword, and the longsword is not getting through. But you manage to sneak the hand axe like under his sword and, <laughs> and, and clip him. And you are going for Bandit Five here, right? Yes. Roll me yes. some damage with that hand axe. Five plus three <clears throat> is eight. That is a lot of damage to Bandit Five. Bandit Five, you just yeah, you cut a good sized gash <laughs> in his side. And there is a uh, a superfluous amount of blood uh, spraying everywhere. <laughs> oh, lovely! Copious, it's a little copious. sprinkle on top of the guts. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. All right. Um. Yeah. End of turn. Karaka, you are next. I am really far away. Should I get closer? Is that probably? Yeah. Good you idea? now that it looks like your <clears throat> friends might have a chance, you may wish to return to the battle. Uh, <laughs> so how far can I go up to between? Uh, Kawaris and uh, Gwind- Gwindiel? I, th- I think you can get in back into the battle if you need it. Or, or like remember, your range on many of your spells Your range on many of your spells is like 100 feet. So, you know. Well, a bunch of them you- are 30 that I've got in my rough. Oh, okay. Well, you, are, you totally have the ability to get within 30 feet uh, of the uh, just deep up, four remaining like, bandits. Um, can you click on that for a second? Yeah, we're doing one. one we're consulting on Bane. Oh. Is that a good one? Up to uh, three creatures what, of my what, choice. No. <laughs> oh so, nice. Wait, just waiting. Oh, it doesn't do any damage. I Listeners, Glenn has I uh in the role of his child basically a Dungeons and Dragons caddy, which as far as I can tell, <laughs> is a service <laughs> that yeah, <'cause> as you... 
Like, I didn't have kids. I could have had a D and D assistant. Some somehow the marketplace has not provided this for all of us, but it looks like an invaluable uh, service. Give me the third level spell. Yeah, I think I can hit it from here. <laughs> sir, sir, may I suggest Bane? Oh. What, uh, I know what I'm so doing. Anything I should do here? What's the? Uh, well, I got I got mage, mage armor. I realized this resistance. I got witch bolt. That witch, I got poison I don't know which, spray. Which bolt. Witch bolt. Witch bolt indeed. I now, love I believe, that show uh, on Netflix. You toss a coin to your witch bolt. The witch bolt. Yeah. I believe what Bane does, uh, Dan could probably correct me or maybe Aline, uh, Bane <sighs> basically puts kind of a punishment on all of the enemies, which might be important for ending the fight quickly. It is that does what Bane does? Oh. three different uh, enemies. And essentially, it's the inverse of bless, which is to say every time they try to do something to us, they get penalized and have to roll a die mm-hmm. and subtract that number. Uh, the one downside to it is they, they'll get a chance to save against it. Uh, so basically, you can give them bad luck for a turn, yeah. or you could fire a witch bolt at someone. <laughs> so, Glenn, what do you feel like? Do you want to hurt one person, <laughs> or do you want to inconvenience three people? I I think, given my previous uh, strategy, I think maybe this that's, point... That's a generous a word. <clears throat> <laughs> Look, it was pretty lights. Uh, um Bane. I think I'm going to do Bane. I think Bane. All right. Is that can you, te- can you tell us how Bane works? Uh, up to three creatures of your choice that you can see within range must make charisma saving throws whenever a target that fails this saving throw makes an attack roll or a saving throw before the spell ends. The target must roll a d4 and subtract the number rolled from the attack roll or saving throw. All right. Let me ask Glenn uh, or Karakun. There are four bandits. You get to target three of them. Ooh. Do you want to bother targeting the wounded one, or do you want to do you want to cast Bane on the three healthy bandits? No, I think on the three healthy bandits. All right, put them all I am going to do a. You said it's a charisma <laughs> saving throw. It's a charisma. Each of the people have yeah. to make charisma Could saving throws. Throw you spell save DC is eleven. Spell safety what? Save DC is eleven. Is 11 my so they need to get an eleven or higher. I'm going to do okay. them. One at a time from kind of top to bottom. Spell so this guy. is, an, this is another bandit. Let me tell you, you don't get into the life of banditry with a good charisma score. So <laughs> this is their chances of this is about 50 50. Uh, bandit one uh, gets it. They get bandit one gets an 11. Bandit three. What? Bandit three gets a nine. Bandit All three right. is bandit three suffers a bane. I'm going to put a little symbol on him. And. Bandit 4, who I don't think has actually done anything to any of you yet, mainly because tripped on guts. Bandit 4 also gets an 11. So what? one Sorry, that that was How unlikely. Three, one bandit is inconvenience. Two bandits have unsettling thoughts, but get through it. Karkun, I think <laughs> that's your turn. Saving throws. Life in All right. 20. All right. Lee, what is next? Hmm. Okay, so... I'm sorry, does Bane give us any advantage if we hit? Gives I apologize. Them a bad effect. Just a bad did, effect. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I think I, I'm just going to kind of stumble northward a little bit. All right. And there is a, it's... a bandit with a crossbow who does not like that there is suddenly a monk next to him. Yep. And that is that is the one, I think, the one directly north of where I am. Mm-hmm. Is that correct? Okay. Um, yeah. So I'm going to, uh, as I kind of step, um, again, unsteadily toward that person, I'm going to use the term lightly, I'm going to try to hit them with my quarter staff. That's a 14. Yeah. All right. Oh, I rolled a one. So that's five points of damage. That's still a significant amount of ban- um, damage for a bandit. And I think, in fact, what I'm also going to do is use one of my Kai points, mm. and I am going to use Flurry of Bows, so I can make two unarmed strikes as a bonus action. So you have run over there and hit him with your staff, and now you're just going to punch him twice in the face. It's what Flurry I do. Flurry of Blows. Yeah. So that first one was a 17, and yep. the second was a 9. All right, so the 17 hits. Um, that is six points of damage. He goes down. <laughs> like a sack of dead potatoes. <laughs> Are there sacks of other things? A sack Are of live, live potatoes. potatoes? <laughs> <laughs> Have you never heard a cry of a live potato? It will haunt you. Yeah. <laughs> and as, 
<laughs> so so many eyes, but only yeah, one right. cry. <laughs> I have eyes, but I cannot scream. <laughs> as I as I punch this dude, I'm looking at the other bandit who is a little bit catty corner to me. I'm just kind of giving him the stink eye. Yeah, the I'm guy that you just. Down. You, the guy that you just caved the head in of was definitely the guy that was like promotion. Uh, <laughs> Bandit three, who is also feeling some unsettling side effects from Bane, looks terrified. <laughs> All right, Lee. Anything else? Nope, that's it. Gwendiel, you are next. Okay, I'm gonna. You've got three targets left. One of them's already pretty badly wounded. Two fresh bandits. Okay. Oh wait. Uh, there's two fresh bandits which who await. Um, I'm going to move diagonal, so I'm in front of uh, this bandit right here. Yep, you stride into battle. I stride wow. into battle, so I can do a command spell. Oh. And um, let me do my little roll first to see if this spell is actually worth anything. Uh, tw- do, uh, um, so five plus... Let's see. Um... What's W-I-S? Is that... Um, wisdom. 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 Okay, so um, let's see. You're going to have to walk me through the ma- uh, for, through what I'm adding to my five here. Do I add the modifier, the spell attack, or the save? To get spells. Uh, so you, you want to add... This is, you see the numbers at the top of your character sheet? Okay. okay. Dexterity, constitution. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. You want to use... So there will be wisdom do, uh, okay. plus whatever. Okay. And then so in, a larger closer, number below yeah. it. You want to yeah. use the plus or minus whatever. Yeah. And in this case, okay, so command, got, the way command works is you're not actually doing a spell uh-huh. attack. That person has to do a saving throw. So you are using the okay. effect... They get a chance to sort of dodge, as mm-hmm. it were, or resist. Okay. Uh-huh. And uh And if they case, if they don't resist, then I can do the spell. Yes, exactly. So okay. uh, essentially, what you'll need is your where it says spell save DC. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Oh, okay. Uh, for you is probably similar to uh, to My, minus thirteen. Thirteen. There you go. So they got to roll better than a thirteen on their wisdom. All right. Okay, so I have five plus three is the uh, is the, you you, the, the you plus three that. for wisdom, huh? Uh, you, you didn't need that. The the bandit is going to have to roll wisdom. Okay. So you basically like you know you point out at him and, and uh-huh. use the command spell, uh-huh. and he feels startled, and he's going to make a wisdom saving throw. Let me tell you, wisdom also not an, a, a, a thing that leads <laughs> you to a life of banditry. <laughs> uh, but he did better than your spell save, so he did <gasps> not. Oh, what? Yeah. What? No! Smart Alec. He All sneers right. at you. Uh, there goes my... Uh, I will defeat you and I will win the glory of the Night Lord. All right, I'm, I'm ducking. I'm, if I'm, my name is not Tasty Pete. Okay, it, it so like, the Night Lord... Seems like his name is, his name is Tasty Pete. Possibly. So even while I'm, I'm angry that my spell didn't work because I was going to order him to... I was originally going to order him to hold so we could interrogate him, but mm-hmm. he, he gave us information because his name is Tasty Pete. And he serves the Night Lord. Okay. Some Good information. Jeez. Okay, that makes um, more sense. Then I run. Although still not particularly. So, some information may be more valuable than others. <laughs> so. Oh, I don't know. I feel like this Tasty Pete thing is the key to unlocking it all. All, all right. right. <laughs> That's one idea. I was sad when they didn't renew Tasty Pete on Amazon. Mm. <laughs> oh, I prefer. Oh. I like. I like. I like Tasty Pete and Tasty Pete on Nickelodeon. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yes. So. All right. Reference acknowledged. La 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 la. <laughs> Next up is the bandits. Go bandits! <laughs> Woo! Bandits! That's the no. worst no. high school football no. team. <laughs> In our first session with our new players, uh, you traveled uh, to the town of White Sparrow, but you didn't quite get there because some jerks laid a trap on the road, and Arturo, the bandit leader of the, uh, the these horrible, wretched people, uh, attempted to get the drop on you, did not. Um, and so uh, you have slain three bandits, but three bandits remain their de facto leader, one, Casey Pete. So Team Bandit is next. I'm going to go for the bandits. So first off, Aline, uh, you are standing there having defeated Two bandits in hand-to-hand combat. Uh, one bandit remains. He switches his uh, crossbow for a uh, a sword, rusty-looking sword, and comes in swinging. Now this bandit has b- had bane cast on him by uh, Karakun. So this bandit rolls a pretty impressive-looking 19 to hit, but yep. when he is bane cast on him, he has to roll a d4 and subtract that. 
Uh, I rolled a 2. 19 minus 2 is 17. 17 to hit. Still hits. 17 will hit you. So his sword cuts you hard in the arm for 4 damage. Meanwhile, <laughs> on the other side of the road, we have one bandit clinging to life. He is, has blood kind of all around him, his his own blood to be clear, uh, because he has inflicted, he has been the target of several grievous wounds from Thaumia the half-giant and he will swing his sword in vain at you, Thaumia. Uh, that is a pretty impressive 21. Ooh, I, I my armor is 19. Can you do anything about this? I suspect not. I don't know. Alright, a see. sword <laughs> catches you in the side for four damage slashing damage. Tasty Pete seems impressed that finally the tides are turned. Perhaps they have just, you know, separated the wheat from the chaff in this bandits. You perhaps you have done him a favor by eliminating um, four damage, Thamia. Perhaps you have done a, a a favor by eliminating the uh, the people that were just the freeloaders in the bandit group. And he is going to also attack Thamia. Uh, slightly less impressive. Seventeen. I think you said your armor class was nineteen. Yeah, mine's nineteen. Clang. Boom. Yeah. Clang, clang, clang goes the armor. Tasty Pete. In keeping with the bard. <laughs> Tasty Pete, not as impressive as his friends. Bard, you are next. Uh, Q. Weris will inspect his sword and then he will turn towards uh, the now de facto bandit leader, walk over to him, singing, Tasty Pete, don't you think it's about time you give up this life of crime? Oh. And he's doing a little dance with his sword. Like this. <laughs> oh, that's what you went out oh for. Gosh, I had to get a prop. I had to get my prop. <laughs> Tasty Pete can't be beat. Uh, and that's then the he problem. will uh, stab him. <laughs> He'll do the stabbing. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Rapier. Uh, that was a very impressive two. <laughs> Plus five is seven. Uh, the song was better than the stabbing. Oh, <laughs> so often so, it is. Story of your life. <laughs> so <laughs> true. So true. <laughs> All right. Well, let's move it along. Thamia, you are next. A bard is helping? <laughs> Ish. We'll see. <laughs> He's not actively hindering. Potentially. I'm, uh, depends. I'm a little worried um, so, about the name Tasty Pete and the association with Thamia and her interest in tasty people. So, <laughs> uh, Just because I am a Goliath doesn't mean that I am. Uh, would it be? Uh, oh my you're gosh, a, I almost you're not a canvas. cannibal. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you're not a cannibal uh, if you're eating other species, I suppose. Yeah, is it a cannibal if it's other? I don't know. This is a comment for another time. Are you a cannibal or a cantibal? Mm. <laughs> well, wait, if you're, a, I, if you're half human, is it only half cannibalism? Mm. So maybe no, it's like, like ethical carnivore. Robot- Eat the top. It's like ethical carnivorism, to- car- carnivorous, Th- yeah, carnivore. We should uh, submit this to Robot or Not, which is <laughs> another lovely podcast Ooh. on this network. <laughs> and in not. that vein, let's. Um, I'm going to, of course, attack Bandit Five, who doesn't have a name, and we don't care because he hit me, and yeah. that doesn't make me very He's happy. A, Technically, somewhat- he has a name. I have a feeling he may die before he gets to share it. With <laughs> My <laughs> name matter. was. Let's see. His name is small. His small. His name is smaller, less tasty. Pete. <laughs> okay, I roll Chewy a fourteen. Yeah. Plus Chewy. five is nineteen. <gasps> oh, that's, oh, that's a murder. Nice. You do, you, you're going to do with a murder. With my long sword, by the way. Yeah, yeah. you're going to do a murder with a long sword. Yeah. Because yeah. um, I'm rolling my one d eight plus three, and I roll the six plus three is nine nice. because I can do maths. You have slain uh, another bandit. Tasty Pete cries out, No! Rudy! He was my cousin! Oh. Thammy, do you want to murder any other cousins on your turn? I mean, we might as well um, take my hand axe. And so, again, I like like the neck chest, like, slicing thing. It's the Rob Roy move. Swing around with my hand axe towards very tasty Pete. Mm-hmm. I rolled a 12 plus 5 is 17. Thamia is a force to be reckoned with. And I'm going to roll my 1d6 plus 3. Oh, I only got 4. 
All right, well, you catch uh, Tasty Pete in the side of the head for four hit points. He was not expecting us. He was only on the first stage of grief. He was not ready for the third <laughs> stage, axe of the head. Yeah. <laughs> so he's got some 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 of his blood coming out of a wound in the top of his head. He's feeling bad about that. Oh, We're making a nice pile. Yeah, you only have two bandits left. And, oh, I should check. The bandit had the potential to save against being baned, and he did save. So... Two bandits left that are relatively unscathed, but what? probably pretty demoralized. Speaking of demoralized, Karakun, you are next. <laughs> I, how dare you? How dare you? Uh, my uh, my spell caddy has been suggesting poison spray. <laughs> okay. Poison spray? Mm-hmm. That only works within 10 feet, but I think I'm close enough to uh, affect... Tasty Pete. Tasty Pete? Yeah. You're tenderizing uh, Tasty Pete now. Wait a second. Am I so, in the way of that poison spray? Uh, no, I can just kind of reach okay. around you a little bit. All right. Yeah. I, so, I, so oh, yeah. Keyards, get down. <laughs> this is noxious gas mm-hmm. that escapes my palm, which is not much different than my normal life. And <laughs> ah, uh, the life of a freelance writer. <laughs> oh. Why am I in my basement? Uh, it says the creature must succeed on a constitution saving throw or take 1d12 poison damage. Let me tell you. Mm. The one good, the one thing that does lead to a life of banditry and living on the road is slightly better than average constitution. I wonder, but but Tasty Pete will try. K- Tasty Pete has rolled a critical fail. <laughs> Tasty <laughs> Pete is still grieving. Tasty Pete yes. has taken a serious blow to the head from an axe, and Tasty Pete breathes deeply as you spray noxious gas in his face. <laughs> what happens to Tasty Pete, Glenn? Well, uh, the poison spray is not a pretty sight. His face starts to shrivel up and darken, blacken, and then, wait, is he going to die from this? Uh, It's unclear. Well, it starts to look like his head is so shriveled up it may actually crackle and fall off his head, uh, fall off the rest of his body. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. I I suspect that you get to roll some damage for this poison spray. Oh, uh, what do I roll for? Roll a 12, roll a d12? Man, the elusive d12. A d12. Ooh. A d12. Wow. Uh, Okay. So I'm rolling a d12. Glenn Fleischman is rolling a d12 for the first time. Pro tip to your listeners. When you're rolling a d12, roll high. Uh, Glenn, <laughs> nine damage. Nine. nine. All right, Glenn. Oh, do I add? Wait, do I add anything or no? No, nope, Just no, nine. I will tell you, you have poisoned Tasty Pete. You see the gruesome sight of to- <gasps> Tasty Pete slowly being uh, dying, asphyxiating from poison gas that emanated from your hand. Not so tasty now, are you? <laughs> Wait, one, there's one bandit left. Can we keep him and interrogate him? One bandit is left, and he I looks I really want to find terrified. out if he was sent. Was he sent from, uh, from somebody? Is there anything he can tell us about his master? What can we learn about the people who sent him? Well, uh, we are still in the fray of battle, so we'll see yes. what happens. Lee, you're okay. next. You may, you may or may not murder this bandit before um, Gwendiel gets to express a, a variety of valid questions. Well, let's oh. try. Yeah. Um, no, can I, can, I, can I be put on the record as screaming, no, no, keep one alive. I, I have questions. Yes. I have questions. Reactions. And okay. I also say, uh, you How know. How much wood could a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck So a thing to think wood. about, um, you can theoretically always choose to do non-lethal damage if it makes sense for the type of attack. It's real hard when you're like, Stabbing people or <laughs> pouring poison gas on their face, but you know, if you're punching, Lee could choose to knock somebody out instead of. Uh, okay. um, Dan, or what are the other rules on things that could or could not be lethal damage? Do you know? I mean, don't shoot someone in the head. Yeah. I don't think there are any. I don't believe there are hard and fast lethal. Uh, okay. Lethal damage rule. So the key thing is, you just have to tell me. I am choosing not to kill. Yeah. Them. Usually, it's just you have to sort of declare it. Yeah. All right. So anyway. Aline, sorry to interrupt your turn. Continue. That's okay. Please don't kill um, me. Okay. All right. So I hear <laughs> my traveling companion's plea. And you may so, or may not care. <laughs> yeah, I may or may not care. Uh, I'm going to I'm gonna try to sweep its their legs out from under them. Sweep, sweep the, the legs. Leg. With my quarter staff. Mm-hmm. Sweep um, the leg, Johnny. Mm-hmm. Oh. Uh, so that's an eight. Somehow, this one remaining bandit 
uh, his reflexes are honed by fear, and he has a lot of fear. <laughs> manages to jump over the the uh, staff that you swing right. his legs. Impressive. Um. Well, in that in that case, t- hang on. Let me just read a thing, very briefly. Do you have a read thing where when thing. somebody dodges an attack, you murder them? Is that what you have? Uh, no, I. Do, I <laughs> well, maybe. Um, I do have the fury, flurry of blows. Mm. Um, yeah, so as a bonus action, it doesn't, I don't have to successfully hit. Uh -uh. Um, I just have to use my attack. So I'm going to use another, um, is it key point, Kai point? Key. Key? Okay, so I'm going to use it. key, but I don't know. I'm going to use another key point, uh, to try to hit it with, hit them with my fists. Uh And that is a 23, which I think hits. Yep. Um, and I think that's. Two blow. Oh, two blows. So that was a twenty-three. That's two is the minimum minimum number required for a flurry, I believe. So yes, <laughs> you have hit. That's him what twice. I've learned from Dairy Queen. Yep. Um, and <laughs> I don't know. I had a flurry all by myself. Let me tell you. Why? Why do we keep coming here? <laughs> <laughs> Four, six, ten. That's fourteen points of damage. But I imagine I'm pulling my punches. All right, he crumples to the ground like a sack of bruised potatoes. Potatoes, potatoes, potatoes. Um, yeah, you, 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 you punched him solidly in the head, Lee, and he, uh, he goes down. Uh, so you are out of combat. You have survived. It is just you and a road full of dead or unconscious bandits and an ex wagon. What will you do next? (laughs) I mean, I I believe it still is a wagon, even though it's turned over and broken. I don't believe... It's an ontological discussion we can have. (laughs) Do you still want to blow it up, Kirkar, on the the, the wagon? Perhaps perhaps we should investigate the wagon before we blow it up, just in case... I would like to put the bagpipes in first. The bagpipes (laughs) first, then the blowing up. lift (laughs) the wagon over... Because I believe, Ooh. as a half giant, that I probably could do something similar to yeah. that. Yeah, maybe, maybe you should write like the wagon, a, put it the right side up. Yes, that is the correct word that I was definitely thinking of. Oh, uh, give me uh, a. Uh, I, I want to see a twelve or a higher on a strength check, uh, okay. Thamia, for you to, uh, you know, single handedly lift a wagon back where it should be. Sixteen plus three. Cool. You make it look easy. <laughs> Boop. <laughs> All right. I would so like I to read it the wagon. Search, search the wagon. All right. The mm-hmm. wagon does not. It looks like this wagon was probably used as kind of like a campsite by these uh, bandits. There's no animal to pull the wagon. There's just kind of rubbish and personal belongings of the bandits in there. There's no goods. It looks there's, like they're probably there's nothing we want. Yeah, there was a crate of food that instead of being opened, someone just smashed, and most of the food has been picked through. And there's just kind of like it looks like there was probably some bread in there. Someone has eaten the bread in hardtack, and it's just crumbs left. So it looks like this ba- this this wagon's main function was as road blocking, um, more than anything. Succeeded, and they're yeah. and they seem well. pretty poor too. If they don't have a lot of belongings, there's. It does left. not look like these are the most successful of bandits. Well, what you she- got rid of them. Yeah. <laughs> right. uh, okay. Well, perhaps we should continue on our... Do the bandits have anything on them? Should we search them? You well, search them. We have one to question, you have, right? And you have, we have one, one to, to question. Oh, right. 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 Yeah. So we have, to, we have to restrain them somehow, don't tie, we? Tie him up. Yeah. Can we tie them up? I don't... What would Am you, I carrying you, Lisa, him? what would you use to tie someone up in Dungeons & Dragons? What would I use? Um, <laughs> do I have a... Um, well, I was just checking my um, equipment to see if I had any rope in there. I'm um, unfamiliar with this object. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. So um, why, would uh-huh. I use a, <laughs> why would I use a physical object when I might have a spell? That could <laughs> I do have uh, 50 feet of silk rope. <laughs> well, wow. don't ask um, don't ask all right so i don't think consent is a concern here <laughs> and may we use your 50 feet of silk robe to tie this yeah, guy up absolutely. absolutely all right all right great. he is like a, a terrifying silken mummy because you use all 50 feet <laughs> <laughs> well we don't want to cut it did you we make the mouth open so he can talk yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah. As long as like his head is why, unpeated. Why did you why did you wrap him so that his arms are outstretched? Unclear. <laughs> I will I will point out that as a uh, as someone who spent some some time aboard a ship, I, I know all the knots. 
Okay. <laughs> wow. So you effectively <laughs> macrame this guy into submission. <laughs> All right. He uh, he seems he seems to have woken up, though he has been hit in the head several times by Lee. And is a bit shaken. Welcome. <laughs> okay. So it's time for us to talk to him, right? I, I guess it's up to you. If he's awake, I want to talk to him. So I have um, what sort of um. So I have an, I have investigation as like one of my my uh, intelligence skills. That would usually be like asking around town. In oh. a, I would say that probably this is more of a persuade or an intimidate type situation. Am I making up oh, okay. skills that are relevant to your character sheet? No, or? I have neither persuasion nor intimidation, unfortunately. I have plus one intimidation. You can also mm. just talk to people. I mean, well, you, 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 you did murder. We just murdered five of his friends. So yeah. we ask him, why did you try to ambush us? Uh, uh, I was just following orders. Okay, who gave you the orders? Uh, the Night Lord. So, does the Night... Wh- who is the Night Lord? He's, uh, he's in charge of the bandits. Don't hurt me anymore, my head hurts Is so there much. more than one group of bandits? Well, I mean, we're like a scouting party. Okay, so you're a scouting party for more bandits? Yeah, we're, uh, I just, I was hoping, I just joined up... And mm-hmm. we haven't proven ourselves yet, and they don't let us stay in the base until we um until we bring them some stuff. All right, so you have We're a like group. Pers- so there's a bigger like, group of bandits that serve serve the Night Lord back at the base. Yeah, I mean, I guess the base. To be fair, I'm like a prospective bandit. So you're a prospect. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, We're that you're a prospective bandit. No, it's like the sons of anarchy. <laughs> Like the, like yep. this. So we want you to take us to the to tell us where the bandits' uh, clubhouse is. Uh, 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 I don't want to. You saw what we did to your friends, right? Yeah, but the Night Lord's really scary, guys. How about bagpipes? How do you feel about bagpipes? We got a guy. We got, uh, we got a guy who will not hesitate to bagpipe at you for 12 hours if we ask him I to. I can bagpipe Gwen, all Gwen day. Deal, I'm going to ask you to roll uh, Intimidate, and I will tell you, because you have a bagpipe player in the background, you have what's called mm-hmm. Advantage. That means you roll 2d20 <laughs> and take the higher. Uh-huh. So roll two, roll a d20, then roll another d20, and take okay, the higher take of four, the two. I take 14. Let's take the 14. All right. Uh-huh. Good choice. Good choice. choice. I'll talk, I'll talk. Okay, no more bagpipes. <laughs> all right. So... All we want is the location. Okay. We want the location. Um, no. Okay. Can you tell me where the location is? Yeah. There's an old there's an old tower. It's called the Lonely Torch. It's it's mm-hmm. north of White Sparrow. That's where the Night Lord lives. Please okay, don't tell him I told you. How many people are there? I don't know. Like a lot? Can you count? Do you know how to count? Like more than ten. I can't count more than that, but like more than that. Would you like to learn how? Can we teach you? Take off your shoes. Oh, okay, so so we're he looking takes off at... his shoes. <laughs> no. no, he can't. He's all tied he in can't. macrame. Yeah, he's like in a silken macrame knot. He can't do anything. Um, this is kind of nice. So what we know is that they're in an old tavern. There's a couple dozen of tower. Them. Sorry, tower. I may, have, I may I may not have enunciated well. An old tower. Okay, an old tower. Uh, somebody in the light. It does. And the night lord is the boss of all of you. Yeah, we're the Nightblades. I mean, we were. I mean, they are. Oh, they are. I'm not. They are. That seems like a bad idea in retrospect. What do the Nightblades do when they're not waylaying innocent travelers? Uh, I mean, that's kind of... That's, that, that's, that's most of it. <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah. that's most of it? All right. Yeah. How You're not going to get me to admit to anything else. Oh, man. Really? Not even <laughs> I, with the bagpipes? Not I know my the- rights. <laughs> <laughs> Where's my lawyer? I'd like a lawyer. <laughs> okay, I'm going to take a moment to take consult. take me to the night lawyer. So, oh guys, I'm take a night court. To night done, done. I'm going to take a moment court. to consult with my my travel companions because they might have questions I hadn't thought of. Okay, I think I might try to pass out. My head really hurts. Okay, we'll wake you if we need anything. Let's teach him how to count. He doesn't know how to count more than ten. I think this is yeah, but he can't see them right now. More of I think that's a more involved undertaking. No, I don't want to teach him how to count. Anyone know this tower that we're talking about? I'm pretty new in town, so I don't really know. I have history. Could I roll some history on that? Roll history. Please do. All right. I will roll some history. I've been rolling terrible. Let's try this die. Uh, 
that's a six. <laughs> Q Yaris, you are not sure. It seems, it, it, though it might occur to you that probably people in town would know about this tower. Perhaps we could ask around. Okay. Um, Sounds like a good plan. Good ask. Mm-hmm. Um, are there? Any, oh well, he's passed. Does out. anyone else want to roll a history check or anything like that? I, d- I do. I want. I have a plus three history. Roll, so roll history. All right. Let me, so uh, that's twenty sided die or a different die? Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. In, right. When in doubt, twenty sided die. Ugh. So I. Ooh. So I think I recall reading about a tower that was similar, but I don't remember it being near the place with the giant hand. And I would love to learn more about it because why, why this tower, why this gang, is it connected to the hand somehow? Um, is it a lengthy tradition? I don't know if our, our, our unconscious friend knows more. That's but, very yeah. catchy. Why this tower? Why this gang? <laughs> I rolled, um, I rolled to 16 to a history for a history check. Nice. You know, uh, uh, Lee, um, I don't know if you've ever been to White Sparrow before, but maybe you've heard about it, and you feel like you heard some story about a tower and some bandits and White Sparrow, but that was like 10 years ago. There was some story, like it was one of the other, like the things that White Sparrow is known for, giant hand, something about a tower and bandits nearby. Um, Do we want this guy still? Cause <laughs> You're not going like, to eat him, we- are you? I mean, I'm, I, I don't know. I don't know how he tastes, so it depends. An untasty um, heat. But I can see about carrying him to the town and maybe get him some help. Or we could use him as blackmail or leverage uh, to maybe find out some more information. There, this is this is I a very complicated like, question. I always Dungeons like dragons. I always like finding out more information. So um, mm-hmm. he is a prospect, though. Because yeah. I this don't know a, this how is much a, they would have taught him. This was yeah. more of a question towards Tony to see if I'm strong enough to carry oh, you, him that far. Yeah, totally. Far it is. He is okay. not that big. Perhaps <laughs> okay. the, perhaps White White Sparrow has a uh, local constabulary that might mm-hmm. uh, be Ooh, interested. Yeah. In I just I would like, I just like race. to take a moment to uh, to uh, sh- shed light on uh, on Thamia asking what her friends uh, in- interpreted as a legal, moral, or philosophical question and she just intended as a carrying weight question (laughs) (laughs) Um. I have a simple (laughs) Goliath yeah so, uh, should you make your way to uh, to Thamia, or sorry, Thamia's the <laughs> person? Should you make yes, your way to over there. to White Sparrow th- with Thamia carrying your bandit prisoner? Do it. All right, you leave the other bandits dying in the road. I guess. Oh, they're, <laughs> so, they're dead in the road. They're already dead. dead. Think, right? They're all dead. They're all dead. We're leaving them Wait, as a warning to the other the prospects. Wagon. Can I look in the wagon? Is there? Did we do that? Are we did that. We, we tossed yeah. the wagon. Okay. Full of delicious hardtack. Yeah. Ugh. No, it was, no, it was empty, empty of delicious, delicious hardtack. Empty. Oh, empty. These hardtack. poor All sound right. prospects got terrible props. That is yes. some hand. That's some hand. So some you, hand. An, uh, it takes you about ninety minutes or so as you come down out of the woods into the valley and <sighs> cross, and your the the path eventually brings you within sight of the town of White Sparrow. White Sparrow is, you know, it's a decent sized little town here in the, in the middle of nowhere. It looks like, you know, maybe a hundred or so people live there. Uh, most notable landmark, giant stone hand sticking up out of the ground. Uh, notable also, that stone hand, six fingers. That's not weird. That's the six fingered hand. I'm it's super a weird. curious I'm about it. Super um, curious about that. You know, uh, in, in uh, you know, I, you are, can I, our, adventuring. can I do an arcana? going to run f- five seasons and they're never going to explain it. It's fine. Can, can, I, can I do an arcana <laughs> check since uh, I've got uh, sure. plus five arcana? You wander into town. This is not a walled town or anything. So there's just a road that uh-huh. leads right into town. And that road, it leads right past the big stone hand. To be clear, uh, the stone hand is like taller than a building. Literally, the tavern in uh, White Sparrow is built in the shadow of the uh, the hand uh it is in fact called what's the name of the tavern shadow of Dude. the hand the shadow yeah no yeah um like it has a name that's about shadows i'm bad at finding things in my pdf the penumbra inn oh uh it is it's called hands the down ever- the best tavern <laughs> <laughs> the ever got the ever hand shady, it to you the ever shady tavern 
is oh, uh, built. Oh, that's not. Uh, that's a that's a good name. Is no, built like in the shadow and a description. Do you think yeah. this place of the is Titanic <laughs> six fingered hand rising out of the ground? Um, yeah. So uh, you make your way into town. People in town are, you know, giving you kind of the look of like, oh, new people. What's with them? What's with that bandit that that half giant's carrying? This is going to be, I wonder if this is going to be trouble or the start of something exciting. So. Good question. You wander into town. What would you like to do? Well, I frankly am parched and could use a good drink. I see we head to the tavern. Do I have to go in or can I just look and stare at the hand for a while? You can look and stare at the hand for a while. Okay. Um, I really want to double check. I want to do an arcana check at this point. Can I do All right. Uh, Can I just ask who is going to go into the tavern and who is going to stand and look at the hand and who is going to do something else? I really need a short rest, so I'm going to go into the tavern for a couple minutes. All right. Lee, uh, Thamia, uh, Qaris going into the tavern. Karakun, what are you thinking? I'm, I gotta look at the hand. I'm also interested. All in right. Yeah. So, Karakun and uh, Gwendiel are standing there looking at the giant hand. This hand is huge. It looks like it is. It's just. It's. It also looks ancient. Uh, Gwendiel, give me an Arcana check. All right. So that's twenty sided die for that. Yep. And then your Arcana. Add your Arcana modifier to it. Okay. Twenty. Twenty. You know, this is unlike anything you have ever seen. It's not magic per se, but it is made of some kind of material that you have like you, you have never encountered in your travels before. And just staring at it kind of gives you a buzzing feeling in your head in not a pleasant way. Um, okay. It does look like it's it's so been here for quite some time. F- there is kind of a mm-hmm. like a somebody has excavated like a like a big hole around the uh, the hand that's kind of peeking over the edge. It looks like there's basically a giant pit with scaffolding that goes back and forth about down to the elbow uh, of the arm connected to this mm-hmm. hand, and then you know disappears into darkness. Uh, there's nobody around, and in fact, it seems like the people of White Sparrow are kind of giving the hand some distance. Okay, so the bu- the buzzing is kind of. It- unsettles me a little bit but yeah it doesn't does not feel good a little bit little bit of a mi- migraine tingle okay so i have um uh what are they called again i have the i have um a cantrip for light mm-hmm. um to cast it will I, oh it needs i'd like to get as close to the edge of the yep. thing as possible and then cast the cantrip for light to see if i can look down and see if there's how how, how far down the yeah. arm goes and how big everything is so pro tip you cast light on an object uh-huh. and frequently it is convenient to cast light on like a rock or a coin or something because uh-huh. then you can like drop that object or toss it down a pit oh cool yeah Okay, yeah. so well, level why two I, magic. Why don't, I, why don't I do that then? I, I pick up a rock that's at the edge of, of the excavation Absolutely. pick, and I uh, do my cantrip, the the mm-hmm. light cantrip, and then toss it into the pit to see how far down Ooh. it goes. Yeah, it it falls for quite a ways until it does not hit anything so much as disappears into Fades, the darkness. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You think there's a good hundred feet uh, of 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 arm down below you uh, mm-hmm. in this pit. And there's some kind of old ratty uh, rope ladders and catwalks kind of built around the arm, it looks like, Go- as people were excavating it. Gotta um, ask where all the dirt went to, because I don't see any dirt piles around, so that's disturbing to me. Yeah. It, it may be that these excavations were happened a long time ago. Yeah. So. so or it's, you it's, found a small logical hole in the adventure. That never happens in Dungeons so & Dragons. A giant, no, so it. it's a giant six-fingered arm made of material that even I, with my decent sized arcana can't ever recall having read about or seen Mm -hmm. it also looks for something that is presumably ancient in that this town has been built remarkably fresh and uh, it looks like brand new no scuff marks no no scratches one no weathering a high high five statue is there any way for us to like throw water at it or something to see what happens when we do that sure you've got a water skin you splash some water on it Nothing I like happens. the person Seems- who comes to town, cast light on a rock, throws it down a hole, throws some water at a hand, you know. <laughs> yeah, the I use. That's what I do when I go to town. I can learn anything more about Dan- the material if it's reactive. It's called heroism. Look it up. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> Wendell, you notice that the water like beads instantly and kind of drips off of it. Mm. Just slides right down. 
Oh, so that's it's handy. Not, we could maybe turn it into some kind of cooking material that might be able to cook yeah, things as long as you smoothly. Were, as okay. long as you were fine cooking your things on the side of a giant hand. <laughs> well, people seem to have cooking excavated. Cooking your things on the palm of it. All right. People seem to so have. Well, that's it could be a big cook pan. So it's smooth. So it's almost like, so it seems almost like a ceramic um, type yeah. of thing since it's I, not porous yeah. in any way. Nope. Um Oh my goodness. Hmm. I'm going to, I'm going to just stare at it for a little bit. All right. <laughs> Karakun, do you want to do anything while you're watching Gwendiel stare at it? <laughs> just enjo- enjoying the scenery. All right. Uh, I don't have, <laughs> I'm course. not sure what I got. Uh, uh, in my, I've got a light spell. We already tried that. I don't mm-hmm. think I have any, uh, uh, maybe I pull out my calligrapher's supplies, which I apparently have <gasps> and just start writing some kind of a uh, story about this hand. Some notes <laughs> oh. about it. Oh, it for future travelers just occurred oh, so- to me i still have two spells left and um one of the ones i locked and loaded for the day is detect magic and i just want to mm. see if there's anything innately magic about this hand so mm-hmm. i'd like to cast the spell you cast detect magic again does not seem like there's anything actually magic about the hand but the material <laughs> is very strange in that it is unlike anything you've seen before, has mm-hmm. some somewhat strange properties, and looking at it is giving you a headache. Uh, well, is there any reason why I couldn't walk down those stairs and just kind of check out what's going on down there? It's maybe you a could. bad idea. It might be dangerous. The catwalk and idea. ropes are pretty old. Um, True. That is one way you could die. Do you want to do that? Uh, probably not. <laughs> so I'm hey, guessing not I yet. I would no, wait not. for I don't know. everybody to come but, together again. Yeah. Does, Rex, does yeah. Rex have a backup character ready for you to go? Sure. <laughs> my my caddy has disappeared. My oh. uh, all right. The, seems like those That's stairs were way. hewn out of the living stone. But all right. Meanwhile, back in the nearby ever shady uh, tavern and inn, um. Some of our adventures have made their way in. It is starting to get toward, uh, you know, evening. So there's a decent sized crowd in the Ever Shady Tavern. Looks like various townsfolk and farmers and miners and whatnot. All the people that live and work in the area of White Sparrow. Uh, a bunch of them are here enjoying a beverage and possibly some stew. There's always stew. <laughs> um, What's in the stew is the question. Yeah. So you guys, you guys are standing in the in the doorway. Uh, like the the three of you and your captive, um, the captive says, "Do you think I can get some stew? <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any money, friend? Uh, can I borrow some? <laughs> Something tells me you are not a good investment. I'm good for it. Trust me. <laughs> mm, not a good Do you guys? Either. I'm looking for a new job. Do you know anything? <laughs> <laughs> we just came into town. We are not your local employment agents." <laughs> mm. the uh the uh barkeep comes out from behind the bar it's kind of a uh uh mid-30s kind of heavy set woman she's got a big apron and she says this is one of those bandits from the from the road yes madam this is one of these so-called night blades i think they go by we apprehended him attempting to waylay some travelers she waves over a uh, a bar back a, a kind of you know greasy looking 14 year old and says go get the sheriff um, there's probably some kind of reward in it for you. Uh, oh, I'll get you some beverages and uh, uh, table of the corners available. That's most kind. And perhaps you would not object if I played a little song. A song uh, stop stop him! Object, stop object. him! <laughs> Maybe after people have eaten. You know, no offense. <laughs> but there was, it's a policy. Oh. You know, it's like one of those, like, behind every rule there's a story. The story is a bad one. No, no, no music before food. They do have a dulcimer up on the stage, though. Oh, well, yeah. I'm that a, might expert, not be a, a master of the dulcimer. <laughs> it's a rusty dulcimer. Rusty um, dulcimer. Oh, that's a way better tavern name. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, and so you settle in. Some beverages and some complimentary stew arrive. Um, you're, hey, you uh, look you're, pretty nice. That's a, <laughs> oh, that kind of complimentary stew. Sorry. Uh, your captive is standing there tied up in silk. Uh, <laughs> As you do. At least, he's wearing, at least he's wearing the fancy rope for dinner. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let it, let's say that eventually uh, Gwendiel and uh, Karakun join the group in the tavern for some refreshments. Because, you know, you had, a, you had a battle. Some people took some hits. All that buzzing has finally, that, that, has finally yeah. made us all testy and hungry. Yeah. So I have a quick question mm. um, about, uh, I have a second wind short 
if I take a short rest, I can regain hit points. You could totally um, do that maybe now. Maybe not Tony. If- I'm going to ask the rest of the people that maybe have played D&D if now would be a good time to do that. Um, or if we're going to, like, how do hit points? So second wind is usually something that you use in When you're combat. in trouble. Yeah. So because it, it says once per short rest, yeah, you can use a bonus action. Yes, a bonus action. So it's usually in combat you're doing something to okay. uh, immediate. But when we're using doing a short rest, so if we're taking a short rest, which is about an hour, you can spend um, some of your hit dice, and essentially you get to roll those. You get to add your Constitution modifier, and that gives you some hit points back. Okay. And you can spend any number, and I will say. If you, if we all sort of get together and uh, we're taking a little short rest there, I can also, uh, if I perform, if I do perform, you get some extra hit points. So, oh, <sighs> yeah, I, I need more hit points. I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, I could yeah. just be. I could hum a little song. I could give a little speech. Nay, nay, play some lovely tune on the dulcimer. Can- I love the sound of hammers hitting. You're strings. not in the tavern yet. No, I'm no we, we we came in quietly. We're, okay, fine. Got a, I'm got sorry. A bullet, <laughs> you can have a down now. I know I'm only three and a half feet tall, I'm but sorry. I'm still. Uh, I'm just uh, yeah. QRS will do a little. He'll just like do a little beatboxing. Mm-hmm. Okay. Wait, you don't Dan, have your pan flute. You that's want. right. Can you Dan, make like a? Can, can you improvise a pan flute with the with the straws that come in the drinks? Maybe. Yeah, D- Dan. Can we hear just a little bit of beatboxing? Sorry. <laughs> this this town is. All right, I'm good. <laughs> this, this town is. Grindio, this town is banned straws. It only allows. Uh, yeah. Oh, the only pan flutes. Uh, yeah. All right. Each, so, each beverage comes with a pan flute. It's very <laughs> wasteful. Oh no! It's like a little paper thing. <laughs> anyway. But think of the turtles. Um, uh, everybody should have uh, a certain number of hit dice. The easiest way to see them in um, in D and D Beyond is to click the. Uh, there's a short rest button. Ah. And I think only Lee. And, Do we need uh, to click that? Damn only yeah, people who took damage. Yeah, uh, yeah. At the top. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't take damage. So. Right and that could just tell yep. you don't have to necessarily use it in there. It just tells you what your hit die are, and then you get a const- your bonuses, your constitution. Uh, okay. And uh, because I did a song of rest, uh, when you the beatbox of rest, the beatbox of rest, uh, you get an additional <laughs> six hit points. Nice. Ooh. So really, we don't need to. If I You'll need to spend lost... a hit die in order to make it. It's basically, I can give okay. you a bonus when you spend a hit die. So you still have to spend okay, the hit gotcha. die. Okay, gotcha. So I check the box <laughs> yep. and yep. then take short rest. Yes. Yep. And then roll whatever uh, D&D Beyond tells you what okay. you can roll to regain HP. Uh, well, uh, it's a good thing that uh, the, the uh, Q's um, hit points were as big as they were because I rolled a one. But your constitution's uh, probably pretty good, right? Two. Uh, three. Yeah. So nine back. So I got three. Yeah. So we're good. Nice. So you feel I'm, a lot better. Yeah, I'm yes. back up to max HP now. Nice. I, I haven't had any hit points taken away, right? Nobody hit me? No, just... No, do you want me to hit you before yeah. I do the song? <laughs> <laughs> hit me, baby, hit one more six. time. So you're healing. You're enjoying some stew and beverages. You're feeling okay. Uh, you know, you're captive... It, repeatedly asked for stew <laughs> and after a little bit of time uh the door to the tavern clanks open and standing in the doorway is a somewhat intimidating looking sight uh it's a you know a uh, middle-aged woman she looks like she's probably in her her 50s uh she's wearing big heavy boots she's got a belt with a sword on it an eye patch she sounds a lot awesome of ta- a lot of tattoos more scars and she has a uh star-shaped badge uh, on her vest she stomps over to uh, amazing to all of you so lee is also covered in tattoos so when when she sees someone step in she kind of just does like the little Mm -hmm. acknowledging head nod uh give me uh some kind of game what yeah uh lee uh probably you know you might be familiar therefore with some of the symbols uh in tattoos what do you think is the most useful what would be the most relevant check for tattoo identification um perception Mm. yeah sure roll roll perception with advantage okay i rolled a six both times so okay Those tattoos look real cool. <laughs> Unclear what they mean. 
All right. So uh, this woman kind of stomps over to your your table, to your booth, says, I'm the sheriff. I hear you might have something for me. Yes. Yeah, we- dear lady, we have for you this specimen. <laughs> <laughs> she looks unimpressed at the sight of the uh, bandit wrapped up in silk rope. Notice oh, the knot work. <laughs> <laughs> I have, uh, can I do a religion check so I can see if any of her tattoos have religious symbols that we might recognize or Indeed. Take them in handy? All right. So um, I roll. Yep. On this, I have a plus five, so I will add whatever this is. Mm-hmm. Um, so I just rolled an 18. Yep. Nice. So 23. 23, yes. You feel confident that none of those uh, tattoos are religious no. in nature. No, they're All like, right. like why, why, why is there the one of Donald Duck? <laughs> <laughs> what does that Cannon. mean? Why is, why is there a pants? Why is there oh, a guys, we're gonna get sued now. Arm? I don't know. Yes. <laughs> a duck um, character who seems to uh, serve in the military yes, mm. has a strange blouse mm-hmm. and no pants. I don't understand. Yeah. <laughs> um, and what's, why, why, what's why the does charge? Say YOLO. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> With this, uh, he attacked us. Oh, banditry. His buddies. Yeah, that's the word she I was looking for. She kind of wraps the uh, the bandit on the head and says, you one of those night blades? And the bandit sheepishly says, maybe. <laughs> I was a prospector. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So we helped. Well, we I appreciate it. Mm-hmm. The, uh, the night blades haven't, haven't caused uh, uh, White Sparrow any trouble yet, but, you know, it's bad for commerce. It's reflects poorly on the town we'll see that he is uh tried and punished appropriately and the uh so customary you're bounty you're with the night blades well they've uh that name's been popping up a little bit more these days how how has the name been popping up <sighs> adventures there used to be a gang called the night blades about 10 years ago seems like they're re-emerging we don't know if it's like a like a tribute thing or some of the old night blades are coming out of hiding a lot of wannabe night blades coming around causing trouble like this this guy i bet he didn't kill anybody right guys guys do we need to tell her we killed like five people or should we keep that to our, wait, is that a problem do you think so you've seen a lot of young night blade types but you haven't seen any older ones have you not so much you know it's hard the uh the kids these days, they can't get a job. They don't want to work the field. They don't want to take up a trade. They get mixed up with these night blades. They think it's a quick way for easy money. And then they end up like this guy. What's your name? The bandit says, Dorbin. Yeah, they end up like this Dorbin, who's going to go to jail for a long time. So good for lady. banditry. Good lady, you seem like you were experienced with the night blades. From- Sheriff Ruth Willowmain, at your service. Excuse me, Sheriff. I'm so sorry. You... But you seem to be familiar with the previous iteration of the Nightblades? Yep. Who was their leader then? Guy named Ralavaz. Went to jail. Took him in myself. Is Ralavaz All the other still Nightblades? in jail? Um, I don't know. I think so. I mean, he went to jail for murder. They How? usually keep you there for a while. So we could go see him if we wanted to? Well, it's not near here. We had to take him, send him off to the, you know, the main city south of here. Several days travel, but you know, would yeah. that would the, would the jail happen to be near an old tower of any sort? Is there an old tower near here? No, uh, you must be talking about the Lonely Torch. That was the uh, the Nightblade's old base. That's just a like an hour's walk from town. All right, is that also to the south, or is that to another direction? That's about an hour north. Okay, so jail jail is like. The prison. It's a prison, I should say. So it's, it's several is, several days is, travel. It's several days to the south. The mm. the tower where they used to be is 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 an hour to the north. Correct. And um, when did the trouble with the new iteration of the, the these guys start up? A couple weeks ago. Just a couple weeks ago. Um, okay. How would we know if there was like any week? What the. Was there anything that happened in local history that might have set it off? Like it's the anniversary of somebody founding the town or there was like a religious festival or anything like that? I just think they're jerks, probably. <laughs> <laughs> um, they don't uh, want to uh, work Sher- for a living. 
They just want to prey on travelers, <laughs> good people. Mm-hmm. I'll be honest, they usually don't don't mess with the uh, the townsfolk yet, mm-hmm. so it's not really my business. But yeah, like this guy, 100% jerk. She knocks so, him upside the head. So, can I ask you about that? Can I ask you about Sheriff, that? Oh, sorry. Sheriff, uh, can we have the rope back? <laughs> yeah, that's my very <laughs> finest rope, by the way. Sure. Um, the the uh, the other the other uh, people uh, eating dinner in the tavern good. watch the very awkward sight of you guys unwrapping a bandit <laughs> from fifty feet of silken rope. The bandit actually, then yeah, stands I, yeah, there exactly. sheepishly I, for a couple seconds. I made the knot so that you can just pull one and he spins yeah. like a the uh, <laughs> like a top. <laughs> I got ten, ten piece, ten uh, bronze pieces. I don't know my uh, what money. No, uh, he's gonna land face up. Ten okay. copper. That's, ten that's copper. My, yeah, there you go. Yes, t- thank you. Uh, don't bet sword. ten gold. That's a lot of money. That's like two hundred dollars. <laughs> says. Uh, no. Thamia, who are you betting with? <laughs> any, any takers? Any takers? It does. Yeah, I'm a Goliath. I I like to compete with all of the things. Is someone this is something that's in the safe? Is someone typing or something? There's lots of like background. Or tapping. Duh, 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 duh. I think it might be Lisa. I might be tapping the the like I can when she's typing. I can see. Oh, it, okay. And I think it's. Are shaking. you idly tapping the table like, or shaking. something? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm. I'm okay. Fidgeting. Okay. Yeah. It's coming it, through it on just your mic. says uh, on the on the microphone. Yeah. Oh, sorry. All right. Uh, one of the the a a, a a townsperson next to you, Thamia, takes that bet and loses. You are now up ten bronze pieces. Nice. Ooh. Um, so now, Sheriff now. Ruth Willowmane uh, pulls a much more appropriate size length of rope from her belt <laughs> and and loops it around the Judgy. bandit's wrists a couple times. E- excuse she me. She gives sir. you kind of she she maintains eye contact with uh, Kiaris the whole time that she is tying an appropriate <laughs> no, knot around the bandit. <laughs> Is she, is she flirting sure. with me? What's happening? Sure. No. Is that you an are? intimidation are check? Are you going to start like a, 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 a bagpipe ballad to woo her? Is this what you are? Is? <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> so, uh, no. Sheriff, I, I beg your pardon, Sheriff, but there's this giant hand outside. I'm really very curious about. It. I don't know. Can you can you tell us anything about that giant hand? It seems like it oh, yep. might have some significance. Probably wise. Giant hand always been there before the town. It's about it. People go down that pit. Yeah, I can't recommend it. Is there candy down there? No, no, no <laughs> I don't think so, sir. Why did people found a town next to a giant hand that is attached to what appears to be a giant arm? I c- couldn't tell you. Is there anybody in town who could tell us? I mean, I think that goes back quite a ways. Can't really speak much to the. Uh, Motivations of the people who founded the town hundreds of years ago. Is there anybody in Feel, town like feels a religious also a bit order like a, or a monk or anything like that that might be able there's to? A, there's a temple. Can't say it doesn't sound like a rude question. A bit, what's what's so great about where you're from? But you don't have any hands. We don't no, have any hands. we don't. Which is why we really want to know about it. So there's a temple. Um, is the temple near the tavern? Uh, yeah, it's a short walk. And are there people in there right now? There's probably always a priest there. It's the Temple of Light. Probably. Mm. Ooh, I, yeah. I, I want to go. All right. Let me ask you, uh, uh-huh. as we get toward the end of the adventure of our session, not the adventure. It's the adventure. Wow, that was really no. yeah. no. good job, yeah, everyone. Was awesome. I like it. Um, so that's it. Giant I'm, hand. I'm ten copper. You probably have some things that you might wish to learn about the town or about the bandits or things. Uh, you could potentially, you know, towns are pretty safe. You could split up to cover more ground mm-hmm. and potentially do some investigation checks if you are so inclined. So um, before we do that, now that now that the sheriff is closer, can I look at her tattoos again and see if I do better? Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's a nineteen. Ooh. The you know what? This time the light's better. You know, you spent some time. You've been probably awkwardly staring at them the whole time. That's what I do. Yeah. Yeah. It you, it seems like most of the tattoos uh, they're pretty old. So she's probably had them for a long time, and a lot of them that you kind of make out look like they're probably uh, military themed tattoos. So probably this is someone who served as some kind of soldier. Okay. So, prior to a, life, a career in law enforcement. So, all right. So, let me uh, ask, and I'll just kind of go around the room and, t- and see what do people want to do. Curious, what do you want to be doing? Uh, I would like to find out more information about uh, the, uh, the Nightblades um, and the tower 
I like to Who do you inquire. want to find that information from? I think I'll belly up to the bar and just start a conversation with some All local right. patrons. Why don't you roll investigation? I'll check with you in a second on how well you did. Thamia, what are you up to? Uh, I would like to know what the soup of the day is. Okay. The soup of the day is stew. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? Does anybody know uh, stew? Rich, or is it rich just fantasy stew? world. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I think I would like to sit and uh, eat my bowl of stew, maybe an ale or something, and just kind of uh, view the people okay. that are currently in the tavern they look like just good common stock the salt of the earth people that work for humans? a living uh mostly humans probably a good about 70 80 percent human there's a couple dwarves and half elves mixed in there Ooh, so i apparently like dwarves oh as a goliath Interesting. I don't, I don't know if they like you. Um, no, probably not. There's uh, but... there's some kind of some bad history between dwarves and giants that I, mm-hmm. I don't know if that carries over to half giants. Um, I don't know. All right. Uh, Karakon, what are you up to? Well, I'm going to go find a blacksmith or a silversmith or somebody who makes things with shiny metal and uh, or dull metal and ask them if they know anything about uh, the, what that hand is made of and if I can buy some and if they have some aluminum foil I can crinkle up. So there is a uh, a smith across the street from the tavern. He is kind of getting ready to close up for the night uh, as the sun is setting. And you come over to him and he says, what What do you want? Well, uh, just, you know, I, I'm very interested in metal, especially shiny metal. And uh, I don't know if you got any shiny metal. Do you got any shiny metal? I got iron. I got steel. I got tin. Oh, you know, I could really use some tin, but, but, you know, while you're getting some tin together, you know, I have, I can pay for it, but I wonder if you ever cut any of that material off the uh, hand over there. It looks like very interesting material might be shiny. Pretty sure it's stone, friend. It's the strangest stone I've ever seen. Are you sure? Have you never taken a, uh, I don't know, whatever instrument you have in here? Is it a hammer? Some kind of tongs? <laughs> hammer and tongs. <laughs> Jinx. Jinx. Uh, <laughs> And uh, just can't try say to I have traveler. You're it's a peculiar question you're asking. <laughs> I'm a peculiar sort of fella, so I surprised. I got that. I got the. I'll just have some tin if you have uh, he, no chance to give me some. Tin. He he takes out some tin snips and he uh, cuts you some tin. Okay, pay him what a couple of coppers for it. Or yeah, don't, I don't, do, it's a, don't bother. Don't bother doing the math. But you can now <laughs> add that you have some bits of tin to your inventory. Yeah. Meanwhile, Lee, what are you up to? Um, I want to find out more about, uh, actually Q, what are you checking out? I'm just, you want to uh, learn? the bandit and the, he's, the bandits. And the he's tavern. asking okay. around town about, or asking around the tavern about the bandit. So I want to ask more about the pit by the hand and what happens right. to people who venture down. So I'm just going to look for someone who looks friendly, um, buy them an ale and sit sure. with them. Give me an investigation check. I'll come back to you in a second. Gwyndiel, what are you up to? I'd really like to go to that temple that the sheriff was talking All right. about. So you head, uh, it's a short walk from the uh, the tavern. There is the Temple of Light. It's kind of a open air, uh, kind of uh, circular structure. It's, it's not really even a building so much as like a kind of like a little plaza. It doesn't have a, a roof. Uh, and it's got lots of kind of like stone uh, figures, five ancient statues of elf men and women, uh, including a statue depicting the goddess of light. And now I am not sure, uh, Gwendiel or Lisa, mm-hmm. if you have chosen what kind of cleric you are. You, you know, clerics worship some kind of deity that they get their power from so i don't know if that is a deity that is in line with this uh temple of light or not um but you know this is this is a place of worship there's an orb hanging in midair in the center of the open nave glowing with scintillating colors rings of stone pews face a central fountain beneath the orb which bubbles with warm water um there's a small circular house sitting nearby which looks like probably the priest uh that maintains the temple uh lives there so I am going to do an arcana check to see if I can identify the statues mm-hmm. and uh, see, see if I know who any of them are. Sure. Give me a, actually, that's probably going to be a religion check. Oh, it's a religion check. Okay. Yep. There we go. Well, let me do that too. Uh, yeah. <laughs> or let me you do can that use the in, same die roll. Okay. It's and- a 17. Um, okay, so it looks like probably this was originally some kind of elven temple that has been kind of like uh, take 
appropriated, taken up, but, you mm-hmm. know, maybe it was abandoned and has been kind of fixed up as still a, to reopen it as a, a place of worship. Um, and it looks, you know, it's nice. It's, mm-hmm. it's, it's actually probably pretty nice, especially for the small little town that is uh, White Sparrow. So. so originally the elves were here. Yeah. Somebody else took it over. Yeah. 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 Doesn't look like the priest is there now. He's yeah. probably... E- eating dinner or sleeping in his house. Well, I'm kind of so. I'm kind of fascinated by the orb of light that's hanging, so I'm just going to study that yeah. for a while. Okay, it yeah. looks like it's probably it has a uh, a similar uh, light spell cast on it that's probably kind of held in place and powered by the uh, people praying and worshiping in this place. All right. Meanwhile, back in the ever shady tavern, uh, <laughs> Qyaris, you rolled an investigation check. How did you do? I did great. I actually that's rolled right. a critical. <laughs> Wow. All right. So you are kind of, you know, chatting up people, playing some little ditties, asking around. Um, uh, You meet a a peasant named uh, Rickman who's been around for, you know, he's getting getting up in the years. He's a a retired farmer at this point. And he tells you a story about 10 years ago. There was this guy, Ralavaz, and he was the leader of the Nightblades, and they were awful, and they used to bother everybody, and eventually the people in the town rose up against them, and they trapped all the Nightblades in a, in, a, uh, in a barn, and the barn was set afire, and he's pretty sure everyone died. Yikes. Wait, everyone died? That's what he says. Then how? That makes sense. Survive how do well, you? I, I'm not even there, so why would I? Do you... Why would I ask questions? <laughs> ah, ah, so okay. you can give him a little of the old Ralavaz. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> so yeah, um, but yeah, he says there's other people around, but probably they don't have anything to do with the old Nightblades. This person does not seem very. Can I roll and see how reliable this person is? Can I roll an insight? <laughs> sure. Roll for public drunkenness. I roll insight. I got a 13 on insight. Uh, well, QRS, he is a retired farmer who's drinking heavily in a bar. Uh, he's very friendly, but yeah, the quality, of the cre- the credibility of the story may not line up with the quality of it. And in fact, he starts to get into an argument with the, uh, the farmer next to him who insists that no, the leader was apprehended by the sheriff and was sent away. To that prison. seems more plausible based on what we've heard. Yeah. <laughs> Unless there's a conspiracy afoot. Yeah. Uh, you know, another guy you, you meet, you meet up, uh, he's a, a, a young craftsman. He's, he's apprentice to the smithy. His name's Odette. And Odette tells you, yeah, there is this thing where there's these new young wannabe night blades sniffing around town, causing trouble. People don't really know what's up with that yet, but they don't like it. it brings back a lot of bad thoughts for the people of, of White Sparrow who were here do 10 years ago. You, uh, do you know anything of a night lord? Uh, Odette has never heard of a, of a night lord. Thank you. Enjoy your drink, yeah. friend. Yep. Um, okay, Lee, you were asking about uh, the hand. Strangely, despite it being the major landmark in town, people in the uh, Ever Shady Tavern are not eager to talk about the hand. It's unclear if it's, you know, taboo or just they're really bored of talking about the hand. Um, but you do manage to coax a story out of, uh, there's an accountant who, who handles the town's finances. His name is Rab. And Rab tells you that, yeah, there was somebody financed like an archaeological dig uh, you know, I think it was back in my dad's time, probably 20 or 30 years ago. They dug that big hole down, down around the hand. They got all the way down to the elbow. Uh, and then, I don't know, I think they went out of money or all the workers went mad. Something like that. Oh, so the pit is is new. Yeah, goes back like 30 years. Okay. I wouldn't trust those ladders. I only like fresh ladders, says Rab. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, I can't think of any questions to ask. Like, Let me think of some questions, Aline Sims. What's what the deal do? with this six-fingered Cyclopean hand? Mm-hmm. Who is this Night Lord? Do the Nightblades have any linkage to the Nightblades of old? It would be a weird adventure if they didn't. What other questions and answers will we find here in the town of White Sparrow for answers to questions such as these? Tune in next time. To total party kill. Thank you and good night.